From the softest lotus petal extract, we bring you Giga Drowse. Replicate perfect sleep over and over again. Giga Drowse, for when you're tapped out. Available at all fine Singer Superstores. Hey, welcome. Thank you for joining me, everybody, with that 80s cheese fest of our intro there. Uh, yeah, anyway, um, everybody's feeling a little vulnerable with all this virus stuff, so I figured I'd make a deck called The Untouchables, which is obviously a 90% integration of my, uh, what was it called, the uh, Godhead deck that I got first with at the uh, PCT a couple months back. So, hey, good to see you guys. Yeah, what's up with the new mod view? Uh, sounds like you really found a new toy there. Little fight, so enlighten Shiraz because I think he's a bit of a Luddite like me when it comes to stuff that's outside of his uh, circle of knowledge as far as like things you do all the time. Anyway, no offense meant. I just, I'm that way too. It's like I see a new piece of technology. I'm just like, what? Just keep doing it this way. You know, old curmudgeon in me. Anyway, this is my, uh, one of my favorite decks. Every single creature in this is untouchable with an asterisk by it. I mean, you can hit this with black spells or you can hit this with uh, like Ag Agony Warp or Chainer's Edict. But outside of that, there's some pretty cool tech in this. The only other creature that we run is one Heliod's Pilgrim. If you follow me on the uh, Buy Me a Coffee link, I go into detail as to why this is. I'll get, I'll briefly go into it here. The games, everything revolves around this. It's uh, when you make, put this on one of these, it's a 4-4 that can't be blocked and gains life. We put it on this, it's a can't be blocked uh, life gainer for the most part. I mean, they can block with um, a colorful creature or whatnot. But anyway, so um, when this resolves, the, the deck wins almost every single time. It's ridiculous. So what I did was I cut Mold Drifter. So every time I saw Mold Drifter, I didn't like seeing it. Uh, I was playing it, and the person would get the jump on me, whether it was Affinity with a Fling or whatever. And I was usually only keeping or using, like, the Evoke Trigger and such. Old builds of this ran... Um, what was it? The not the the flicker card, uh, ephemerate and such. But what I went with here is three dispels, and I went with all four ponders main. I used to only run two. I'm going to all four now. Four preordains. I got two relics, uh, four counter spells, two journeys. Uh, we got two oblivion rings. Um, fortunately, neither of them are auras. So the only thing this this is here for is to be edict bait and to find these and be, be number like five of the steel of the godhead. Because like I said. And that drops, you got it. The mana seems to really work well. I just probably jinxed us and we'll get screwed every time. But we've got four planes. I believe there's three, six, nine, ten islands, two wilds, and four barons. I'm sorry I'm ignoring the chat here, guys. Uh, uh, minimize the dock at the bottom. Da, 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 da. Hey, MTM tag. Good morning back to you, sir. And so in the sideboard, I'm having a lot of fun. I'm going with a circle of protection black. Remember, we have a lot of draw on this. So uh, multiples are usually not needed. CLP blue. CLP green and CLP white. What's missing? Red. Why? Because we're really biased towards it with four of these, four of these, and three strands main, and then life gain. It seems a little cruel to run a CLP red. So um, I've got everything but red there. Leave no trace, which can... It's it's neither here nor there. I mean, sometimes uh, against uh, hexproof and such, if you if you end up calling something that has to be white, or I should say heroic, it can get you in a little bit of a tight spot if you've got some journeys out. But I haven't found anything really better. Two obsidian alkalites. So this is what's going to happen today. I'm going to brag about this deck, and then we're going to run into nothing but mono black control, which is never anywhere in tournaments, but it's everywhere in the tournament practice room. So this is my uh, homage to that, uh, being able to... Uh, only four planes. I'm not quite sure how much I like it yet. So far, it's really helped. Um, we've got three uh, Holy Lights. The other bad matchup is Elves. You almost can't win the first game. <clears throat> uh, unless you get, you know, if you get a Prismatic early and you get a 4-4 on block with life gain and you can keep eating their life gaining dudes, then you'll be all right. But other than that, uh, we really need to lean on this later. Uh, we got the fourth Strands, one Echoing Truth, two more Relics, and then this little gem, Hindering Light. Um, <clears throat> really liking this card against black especially because you know it can counter an edict effect because that targets you or a permanent you control so if they mess with this like with a, a pyroblast or red elemental blast you can you can uh, do that and oh hey we draw a card 
pretty cool quote on that too. So anyway, without further ado, I'm going to jump right into a match here and hopefully we win a bunch and we'll see how things go. But yeah, I just called it The Untouchables. Not the best movie, not bad, but uh, yeah. Anyway, hopefully everything is healthy and happy out there. I've uh, been up to, we're going to go over the Ikoria land of, or layer. <laughs> what, did they, what did they call it? The Oh yeah, the layer of goofiness. That's what I wrote down. I'm just so kind of bummed out about this set. Not the mechanics. I'm just not saying like a lot of the cards I think are going to be pretty good and stuff, but just Godzilla. I mean, what's next? They're going to have Pokemon and Scooby-Doo and cards and. I, I don't know. It just doesn't feel right. It's uh, I wouldn't want to see a Care Bear from the 80s in a magic card. It's as a joke, maybe, or a <clears throat> one of those unglued sets. But yeah, it's uh, it's it's pretty. Oh, the the new feature is not too hot there. A little fight. Sorry about that, buddy. Yeah, the um, let's see if we're oh, here we go. Looks like we're in a game here. All right, here we are. All right, I'll close this down. And we'll see. A lot of times we'll get a Rage Quitter, if, and I can't really blame him with this deck. It's kind of weird. We've, we've got a bit of the combo, and I've got early defense. I'm actually going to keep this hand. We're on the draw. I just hope we don't draw many more lands. This is right on the border of keep scoop. Yeah, I think so too, MTM Tat. That's um, <clears throat> exactly my thought too. Where it was just like everything is just a paragraph of reminder text, and so far of what I've seen, I'm just like, dude, come on. So... uh Hopefully I'm proven wrong. That's one of those things I don't want to be right about. But man, like one Godzilla card's bad enough. I think I've counted like four or five now. And and they're not even like saying huge lizard suchity such. It's named Godzilla and it's pulled right out of like the latest Netflix anime, like the artwork. And just, man, I just can't get over how tacky it is. Just makes me feel like I'm, I don't know, it's just like they just spilled a bunch of common topics in and just made a magic cards and it just it takes the lore away for for me anyway i quite like mutate says shiraz but i don't think godzilla should be an mtg yeah i think everybody i chimsky's in the house i think everybody's so far i know of feeling that way but i don't know if we're creating a sort of echo chamber or what but i've yet to hear anybody come out and go oh right i can't you know that's awesome it's just I mean, if you're as old as me and you remember like Scooby-Doo, I mean, that's the same vibe it gave me. I made my wife laugh when I said that. She's like, why, why does that bug you so much? And I go, well, like the gummy bears or Scooby-Doo or like a Transformer. You don't expect that to be in a card like Michael Bay smiling next to it with some explosion in the background. It's just like, oh, guys, there's not a shortage of things to pull from here. I, I want to know what meeting that went over well. And they're like, yeah, this is what people want. It's like, no, they don't. <laughs> Technically, it turns to the multiverse. Even the goofy shit is legit. This, this is true. Yeah, I've, I thought of that too, but I'll, uh, I think of that compared to, um, I'm going to just get the combo online here and try to uh, get things rolling here. We'll bring out maybe Edict Fodder and uh, rock from there. It's even a wall here. And a four isn't that worthy of a moment's peace if they've got it. We'll see. Might get bounced. Who knows? Yeah, it's just... I don't mean to hark on that. It's just the, the more spoilers and stuff I see. Now, great whites. I like that. It makes sense. Even though it's an earth creature, there's the new otter, which everybody's flipping out about for a commander or for not commander, I should say. Just I think that's the first time it's ever got banned before it even happened. That's pretty funny. All right. So we've got open men on our opponent's side. I'm going to drop this uh, stone horn so he can't start flickering goodiness. Um, I'm going to drop the journey here, trip the wild so that I can, if I do draw another journey, I can have a double play here. Be really careful when you drop journey that you have another thing you can maybe hit with if they've got mana up. Cause, uh, if they like bolt their own creature or something, it can get pretty, uh, interesting. I'm just going to do this now. Definitely should do it at the end of the turn, but when I'm streaming, I tend to just want to keep moving. X and Rouge, all right. Oh, my little pony and MTG. <laughs> oh, I forget which which card was that. Was that Tarpan from like I haven't been this unmotivated by a set. I, the mechanics maybe, but I'm telling you, I could probably be having a good time drafting that set, and then somebody's gonna drop a Godzilla, and it's gonna give me that same feeling a damn planeswalker does, where I'm just like, God dang it, are you kidding me? This deck usually is pretty good against Tron. They had natural Tron right straight away, and here comes a Denrova. All right. Which even the Guardian's not that good against. I'll pitch a uh, island there. Well, we've got a few turns here, but not many. I better draw another journey here quick. But he's got up the mana. 
I tell you. These are like the, the boring shows, right? It's like, hey, let's jump on a stream with Tron and quit game two, just like last week. Don't know if it was the same pilot or not, but that was pretty funny. They did it right on cue. Let's see. If they counter this, that kind of implies they don't really have any sort of a blink mechanics online yet. Interesting. All right. I'll leave that up to feign a dispel. Oh, well, at least it was limited. I could see that. The anime thing, I mean, it was cool a couple months back, but even that is just like, you know, keep magic magic. Like I said, it's not like... Um, you're running out of letters or something. It's, there's there's so much stuff to go off of here. You know what? I'm just going to go to game two, guys. This is, I could maybe find counter magic, but I, I really, honestly, I, I wish there was a filter where I didn't have to play Tron because it's it's just, as a, sh I don't mind playing it personally. I do a little bit. I'd be lying if I, if I did. But the big issue is when I'm trying to do, do the show here, I just, an hour and a half matchup is not something I'm really thinking people want to, be privy to all the time. All right, uh, we're gonna take out some strands here. Maybe two, maybe both. Now, hindering light. Maybe I should do this. Counter target spell targets you or permanent I control. Well, then Rova is about the only thing that's gonna be going off there. But I'd rather have that than a prismatic strands in this matchup. Although I could also pull blue. So I'm gonna bring in COP blue because that covers all of their aggro unless they're running a fireball. In that case, we're just gonna be screwed and we'll go off to the next game. Other than that, here we go. Woo! Scoopville, indeed. Yeah, those are the kind of draws where you just, even if you're biased towards Tron, they're going to get you. Ten man at a one. All right, we got this. Psycho, boom, hit, smack, and hopefully we'll fall into uh, some of our many dispels. We'll keep this. Did I take out? I used to have a fourth dispel, but I changed it to Hindering Light for the black matchup. Little cutesy, being that it's, you know, white-blue, and we're playing white-blue. I'm usually the first person to say, don't just auto-include those things, but... It is definitely on course here. Hopefully everybody's healthy and happy out there. Uh, maybe not happy, but healthy, I'll take. Um, now everybody's neck of the woods is getting a little scarier by the day, if you watch the media anyway. Been on super lockdown here. It's been an entire week. I haven't pretty much gone further than maybe, I don't know, three blocks from the house. There's a lot of parks right where I live, and I get out of the house at least once a day and go for about a mile or two walk, and... Think about Popper, no less, of course. We'll drop this. Um, I think I said this the last time I showed a deck similar to this. Always lean on Galena's Knight more than the um, Velkin and Outlander, even though the art is better on this. It is an artifact, and in a pinch, uh, there's a lot more things that can kill it. So if you like this kind of deck style and such, keep moving like that. Godzilla stuff is to take two on comics and manga style. That Japanese version of the Walkers says X and Rouge. I don't care what it's based on. I don't like it. It's awful. Okay. Well, we've got everything online here. Uh, hmm. I'm tempted to just... You know, I'm going to ponder here. I'll go big next turn. I just want to have some sort of counter magic. There we go. We'll do this. Uh, this and this. Say no to that. Yeah, this is this is tough though because if I cycle that, then I then I miss the um, the goods there. Uh, let's see. I'm just gonna attack here. I'm gonna save that after we draw. I'll cycle the barons for a blue. Then I'll drop the relic and have dispel back up. It's a bit slow. I don't know. We'll see. Let's go here. I'm expecting rain in our area pretty soon. I was gonna say, gosh, does he just have the natural right straight away? It's almost as good as straight away. Bing. Gosh, I was not a fan of Space Godzilla or <laughs> Death Corona. Me neither. Yeah, they feel uh, it just feels like another game. But I've always said that about Planeswalkers too. I'm just ugh, that's that knee-jerk reaction of them. I was trying to get into a Penny Dreadful event on a Gathering, and I just gave up. It's just too like. I would find old decks and import them as like a proxy and like 90% of them weren't legal. And then it's just very strange how how much of the decks are just like, you know, four hours later. Oh, now it's illegal because it went up one cent. 
think every card has to be under two cents. And so there's actually quite a few rares allowed and such, but I was just, I was really blown away by, there's there's no, I mean, I guess it's because there's no online support for it. And I, I tried the Scryfall thing and everything. It was just, man, I could tell why that, that format hasn't taken off. No offense to it. It seems pretty fun. And I had a neat idea, but everything was three cents when it said it was two and the other thing. And then it's like illegal, illegal, illegal. And that's after spending like an hour thinking I had the next best thing. I was confused because not only did you get an alter, alter card, but comic style and full art. We're getting five versions of some cards. Yeah, and unfortunately, Hex in there. They all seem to be Godzilla. <laughs> yeah, I, I really do want to be on a uh, a fly on the wall in that meeting. Like, you know what people want? <laughs> they want all their latest. I, it's like, you know, we're going to have like breaking a Breaking Bad expansion or something. It's like, here's Walter White. That's what people want. It's like, what? No, keep it magic. Drive me nuts. All right, we'll do this. We've got some shenanigan back up here if he tries to blink anything with it. Bit of a slow roll on our part, but we've got the relic and a, a dispel in hand. Oh, and it looks like we're going to be able to use it. Yeah, let's not do that. Boink. Perhaps corporate plays to aim lower at age kids. Yeah, well, that's what it felt like to me. I told my wife, I was just like, man, it, it's such a immediate, like, Ugh, just toys our us feel just janky it's like magic especially online and stuff it's definitely like it seems to be around the 30 years it, like very serious gamers like almost more of like a chess or poker sort of vibe and then they're just dorking it up with these little i don't know what's what's next bubblegum tokens i mean all right enough uh ranting he did <laughs> I didn't know that about John Fingal. I, I know the, uh, what is it called, the Shadow Mage Infiltrator, but other than that, I'm a little ignorant as to what you mean there, sir. All right, we're going to ponder here. I'm not too curious about the life. I'd rather get, ooh, I, I like all of this, but I'm going to throw it all and recycle it. Yeah, we'll cycle that. Oh, man. Well, I've got the relic bait. Let's do this now. Let's ponder. Hopefully we find another island. Keep our land up. Dex not being so nice to us. Okay, we'll live with this. It's not counter magic, but I just want to have access to a trip in that. Next turn, we'll uh, come in with four, but might be a little bit too little, too late. They've got Tron nice and early here. And our dispels aren't showing up. We have four counter spells and four dispels. We've only seen one of which after pondering three times, so things aren't looking so good for us, but it's all good. <laughs> I'm not. I'm so out of the loop with uh, pros and and uh, planeswalker. I'm not even quite sure if you're joking or not. There, cash override. <laughs> All right, down comes the broken dignitary. No, we don't need to design, set, test in different formats. Just make three faction big creatures with weirds and safe and mechanics and different five different art styles. <laughs> yeah, the one that really got me just. Like, I think my blood pressure went up. It was like some mecha suit Godzilla. And I was like, really? God, you're just doubling down on this bad idea? Wow. They have even banned a card before it was actually went on sale. Yeah, that's that I was interested in because my, my uh, youngest is really into Commander. And he's like, this thing got banned before it even came out. I'm doing this just in case he's got some echo shenanigans. I'll drop here. I shouldn't have done that. I should have put that on there. But we'll save that for next turn. Fane, like we've got some sort of counter spell here. We've got an early relic. Hopefully it means something. A lot of times when I play this matchup, this is when I have a counter spell and a dispel in hand, and then it feels like slapping around Tron. But if you don't draw it, you don't draw it. Any Godzilla looks awful. That's my whole thing. It's like it looked bad enough that it, they literally copy-pasted the, the zeitgeist artwork of like like I was saying the Netflix shows, but then to call it Godzilla, it was like oh boy, that just that just felt bad. All right, I'll trip. We only have three more of these. Hopefully, we draw into one here. I don't want ephemerate shenanigans going on. Of course, he's probably just got a ghostly flicker right behind it. Yeah, there's some new companion rule, the commander, where you can just, there's no reason to not play with it, is how my son explained it to me. So I was like, all right, I'll take that. 
Can you show me a planeswalker? I'll show you a guy that doesn't want to play magic. <laughs> All right. Thank you. It's nice that something showed up here. All right. He's got blockers. We're going to go like this and try to sit back. Not feeling too good. We're way overpowered here. We've only got a counter spell to our name. But we do have one on a four-turn clock. Soon to be two turns if we can put the other uh, Steel of the Godhead on. We'll see. Would really like to see another relic show up, but dun dun dun. Hmm. I think we let that go. I'm gonna let that go. If I counter that and then Dinrova shows up and bounces the game's over. So I've got to try to not be too counter happy here. Yeah, you know, it's funny you say that cash override. I really like the mysterious egg. I just, not the card, just the, the idea of it. That was a home run. It's like, that makes sense. It's like, what the hell is this thing? And, and there's two bits of artwork. One of them's really creepy. We'll do a little thing after this. Oh, for the first break, you know, if you, if you do have some coffee to get or uh, if you like Shiraz and want to uh, smoke the earthen leaf or I don't know what you're up to on breaks these days, Shiraz, but I've got the latest... Um, Icoria Layer of Goofiness uh, mechanic trailer explanation, but it runs about four minutes. That's why I was saying if you've got something to do and you're, you're familiar with it, don't worry about it. Okay, that's kind of strange. A little dignitary action. How do you feel about menace and trample counters? Seems like really lazy design. I didn't f I didn't get that reaction to it. I, um, I thought it was an interesting way to just kind of upgrade creatures and like one of them gives like hexproof tokens and stuff. I thought it's interesting. I can see it's a it's a lot less clunky than some of their past attempts at mechanical shenanigans. But all right, here we go. Now we're starting to get some decent counters. We'll throw this on here. And the next turn, we'll just start swinging and countering stuff. Maybe I don't know. We'll see. If anything, we're gonna reset the life here. I'm sure he'll we'll eat a counter here. Hopefully, it's from the graveyard and it's not recursed. Four. What's this all about? Kind of float blue. Oh, all right. I don't know why the two's up. Okay. It could be inconvenient. You could have to note which counter what. I'm not quite sure. Oh, the counters, yes. Yeah, it does. I think MTM Tat was mentioning that earlier, though. It does seem like it was built for arena play, and then they just made them printable. Some of the things, it's just like, my goodness. Been having a lot of fun. Tabletop Magic with my youngest. He's got a cool, I think it's a Pioneer deck. It's close to type or standard, but um, man, and I when I play Boros Bully and he plays that, it's like a really, really 50-50 game. It's it's a very, uh, it's a nice, nice level of uh, popper there. A nice to level up popper. Uh, if I counter this, I'm going to counter it. I don't want more shenanigans coming through. Yield here. Don't have it. Don't have Pulsa Marasa. I'm super pumped on the negate cancel cycle, though. Yeah, I'm sure there's going to be cards that are going to stick out and stuff. I'm not saying it's like Homelands Part 2, but man, thematically, ooh. I really hope, you know, when we take those surveys and stuff, if you feel strongly as I do about this kind of stuff, let, them, let it be heard. Let them know. It's, man, that's, that's, um, I think we got this one the way our opponent's playing. We've got a counter spell. We're going to gain eight life here. If we can, yeah, we're going to untap here. Hey, look at that. Okay. Now our counters are showing up. I'm telling you, this usually has a really good game against um, Tron. Get out early. We we've we got enough protection and counter magic to fight them. And, and our, we do have four relics. We've only seen one so far. But, but like, when you do take those surveys, let them, let them hear it. Because I doubt people were saying make a Godzilla set. I'm sure there was one in a million out there. But why would they have listened to that? Termogorf dice. I do not remember that. Okay. One and one. Let's see. Let's see. Sorry for the Tron matchup, guys. Unfortunately, people play it. All right. So, counter target spell it targets you or a permanent you control. It's not that good against Tron. We've got four relics, three dispels, four counter spells. Our journeys and rings will keep us kind of in it. This will go search for it. If I was running more white, I would be running Rune of Protections, which are auras and could be found with this. So if you like this kind of style and you're like, I want to build it better than that old man, well then go that route. Put more white in it and run like that. So 
blue white deck without ephemerate and ghostly flicker. What is this madness? It did have ephemerate, and I wrote at length about about it. The problem with ephemerate, and I had mold drifters in that build, is you draw it. That's cool. I'd be smashing, smashing. Follow me on this one. And I'd be holding ephemerate, holding ephemerate, and it was turn after turn after turn until it became relevant. Now, obviously, it's an amazing card. You, you throw it on mold drifter. There just weren't that many targets to abuse it in the style outside of mold drifter. And I found myself more often than not waiting five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten turns to for the combo to come online. And it's like, well, shit. If I sorry for the swear, if I would have just not played it and had like another card that just like ponder that could help set up the combo from turn one on, fix mana from turn one on, find these and counter magic, then I would just be winning more often. I'd be winning less games crazy. Like I've got nineteen cards and I beat you. And it's like, yeah, I could have done it with seven too. That was that in this style. Yeah, I'm not trying to be too much of a um, what's the word? I like this hand a little bit too late game of a card, but it's like we mulligan to one if we keep this. But we've got ponder, which is just an auto keep, keep this and a turn one relic. That's pretty awesome, too. And we've got you know the hardest part of our combos in our hand. So once we find a uh, dispel, we should be good to go. But yeah, that. Okay, here's this. I'm going to lead with this first. I like Relic. I like Counterspell. You know, I'm going to keep all of this. I love having double Relics. Nope. I'll play the control game. It might bite us in the butt because we're not going to have any aggro very soon at all, but we're going to be able to eat the yard and counter stuff. So I really, really, really like having double relics on board because you can trip one and still have stuff for any sort of shenanigans. If you run up against a really good Tron pilot boy, sometimes they can they can really go to work here. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna. It's a little too early to hold that counter magic. I'm gonna just bring out both relics. Take that. Yeah, hopefully. I know an island's coming up next, but after that, be nice. Maybe a. Evolving Wilds, Ash Barons, we'll see. All right, expedition map in the house. Let's see, got Fading, nope, no counter magic there. Boy, they must uh, have it. Curious why they wouldn't, they've got access to three colors there, and they chose Prism with an expedition map. Interesting play. Guess we're not really representing any sort of heat yet. Alrighty. Okay, that's enough blue. Let's sit back. <laughs> Corey, it feels a lot like Ikea. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? <laughs> feels a lot like Toys R Us to me. Okay. Those of you that like the cartoon series um, Avatar, The Last Airbender, I made a the Amon mask. Got it pretty close, so much so my my kids are fighting over which wh who gets to have it in their room. <laughs> Just spit my beer, sister. <laughs> Dang it! All right, we're getting a little clunky here. I'm gonna trip one. I want to find a white, or at least get closer to it. Jeez, this is getting awkward. All right, oh, we still got a relic, two more in our yard. Just hoping we could find a white source here. Really uh, getting clunky on our mana here. Happens about one in so many often games, but this is frustrating. I'm um, season three. Oh man, and James Gee, have you seen it before? Or is this the first viewing? Yeah, that got us into all of the animations out there. Or anime, I should say. It just, man. First time. Oh, I'm so jealous. I'm telling you, that is the number one series. If I could give myself like a amnesia shot, I would do that and watch it all over again. It was that good. It was, it's like all the best parts of uh, Kung Fu and, and martial arts lore with like Greek mythology and like just a whole new... You know, it comes right back to this Godzilla crap that I'm ranting about. It's There's not a shortage of ideas out there. It's just some bad writing here and there. So, good God, this is 
a first. I have 10 ac access points to uh, white. Oh, we're at seven. I'm not going to pitch it yet. Man, oh, man. I just wish we had, like, three other counter spells and we could at least buy time here. This is uh, getting maddening. Oh, I was uh, really into... Um, the uh, Korra series, too. I didn't think they would be able to stand up the second one, and that, that was almost just as good. All right, we're going to try to keep our card advantage in check a little bit here. I really love the Blind Bandit with Toph. That was a really one that stood out. And Uncle Iroh is easily one of my favorite characters of all time. I like those, those old men types. In um, Naruto, which we only watched because I think there's a, uh, what do you think? I'm going to wait to get that mold drifter. I really think he's sitting on a pulse of Mirasa with that mana up. <laughs> and Gothic Steampunk. Well, Gothic was right before, and then Kaladesh came out with the Steampunk, so I guess you can merge the two and get it kind of close there. Come on. All right, well, I actually don't mind this draw here. Because now I've got an answer to the answers. This is kind of embarrassing, just drawing all islands here. We have 10 points. A fourth, Every fourth card should be something that could get a planes or is a planes at this point. This is ridiculous. Like, Tron needs any help, right? Reprint Brassman. Yeah, I love Brassman. I've tried to put that... I actually put that in one of the versions of my decks, uh, the Blue Robot build, to fetch with um, you-know-who. What was it? Um... Trinket Mage. It's a lot of card, a 1-3. But then there's that, um, the new, or not new, but semi-new, the Gargoyle that came out. That's, you can make it fly later on and stuff. I ended up going with one of those. It was just a better card overall. All right, this is getting really ridiculous. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to trip this. I just, I need to draw a damn planes. Thank you. We're going to take the chance at this point. I'll drop a knight. It's probably going to get... Oh, nope. All right, cool. My goodness. All right, one more relic in our play here. But yeah, the the uh, Korra series, the Avatar after the first season, really, really cool cast of characters in that one. I really enjoyed that too. Amon, the uh, villain, and then uh, Zaheer, and just a lot of good stuff. And then when they go back to visit the very first Avatar, I'm trying not to give anything away there, uh, Nimchimsky. But man, awesome stuff. Hey, where's Nils? Is Nils with you? I've got to bring him in so I don't lose this matchup. Remember our winning streak when he's in the house. Good times. That's what I was afraid of. All right. I'll bounce that. He's got flicker mana. Really, really want to get like a. What should we draw into here? Like a, we've already got two of those. I'm gonna get rid of. I'm gonna get rid of that guardian. Then Robo Horror just makes quick work of that. So really want to go into a um, dispel here so that I. Oh, maybe he's gonna give us an opening. So we can take that. Ah, damn it. Boy, I trip this and try to grab a dispel. I'll let it go because he's only got two colorless mana there. And we'll do that. All right. Discard a card. Um, Sure. More rock like that. Got to grab my dinner from the kitchen. Oh, Saturday afternoons. That's right. think with the world in the state it is to pick a pick a house and stick to it this lately right all right let's uh entrap that bad boy since he gave us a nice opening hopefully there's not a, another dinrova horror that'll be scoop country if he's able to uh bounce the oblivion ring that'll really suck i'm gonna put this out yeah let's put it out now and i'll throw this out too Not the way I like to start a show, usually with a 
hour long matchup. Thanks, Tron. Can't quite still put my finger on this list. I really love it. But man, there is time. I'll go on runs where I can beat Stompy and RDW and all, you know, those kind of aggro draws or even like um, Hexproof and such. Like, you know, easy. 2 0, 2 0, 2 0, 2 0. And then there'll be like two days in a row where I just can't buy a win. It's very strange. The more I play this game, though, the more I think it's mostly mental as far as obviously it's a mental game, but I mean, my mood. If I'm really into a deck, man, I just seem to clobber with it. And then, and then if I just kind of feel not in the mood, I'll, and I, I can't really point to like extreme mistakes or anything I'm making. It's just, uh, it's almost like the board knows that you're not into it or something. I think the whole world is some sort of stay at home order, buddy. Get rid of Ephemerate. This is why I bring in CLP Blue here. If he's only got the one, um, you know who, then we pretty much can shut off. I got timed out yesterday, though, playing a Circle of Protection Blue and Black against a Demir Mage, and I had him locked up, but I just had to activate so many times that I fell for my own trick and had like 15 seconds left to their 30, and I was just like, oh, can't activate it that many times. I'm going to time out. So I digitally shook their hand and went on my merry way. All right. I'm going to use the white. Um, you know what? Let's uh, Let's pull this first. Take that. This might get a... No, all right. I'm going to feign like I've got, you know what, but I don't. Let's throw this on here. God, I wish I had to spell. I do run three of them. Well, technically we're not here yet. Suggestions will keep it to the essentials. Yeah, I saw that on the map today, Little Fight, South Carolina. I was just like, dude, get it together. Like, what was that governor, I think, in Georgia? He's like, oh, new evidence shows that... Social, I'm like, uh, new evidence? Like, are you kidding me? It's been out for weeks. That dude sure lived up to the, the South's, what do you call, uh, just the rumors of, you know, everybody always kind of implies that ignorance and stuff. It's probably couldn't be further from the truth, but God, that governor is sure not helping things. He sounded, he sounded dumb as a bag of hammers. Just came back in from shopping earlier, but left the house. But not left the house in four days. Yeah, we've got it even more hardcore. My um, the science says that the um, women are less susceptible so far overall to it. Something to do with the uh, proteins, and I'm not quite sure what the science is. But so far, it seems pretty pretty biased towards uh, killing men over women when it has the choice. So I'm um, let's see if I can. Do any sort of shenanigans here. We'll go grab. I guess we'll grab another island. Um, but anyway, so she's in. Plus, she went out on the first one too. So, and she needs to get out of the house more than I do. I'm a, quite a bit more hermetic than most people I've ever met. Well, we're doing it anyway. No restaurants, bars, open stores. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, Stonehorn's going all out. Check this dude out. It's like I'll see your COP blue and. Raise you a really pissed off rhino. Problem is, we're going to gain 99% of that life back, unless he's got some sort of uh, technology with that. Or I could make it a 6 6 with another godhead on there. I don't know if I want to go all in with that. We'll see. We're two weeks at home with two toddlers at Sex and Rouge. Started to research Google on how to make a slipknot. <laughs> yeah, I think the best advice, too, is people need their space. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna rock like this. Let's see if I can't get in here. It's probably gonna rock right into a moment's peace. Hopefully not. It's got seven cards. Ugh, brutal. No, nope. all right. Oh, we're back at full life. Let's uh, eat the yard here. Make some masks and buy some instruments, Hexen. Yeah, it's funny. My wife was making masks too. I was. Because of my mask making stuff, I thought she wasn't doing that, and she had the sewing machine out. So I've got this cool ninja mask. That's what I want to do: is make like a Naruto like ninja mask. So when I go to the store, I put a little metal plate there. It'd be pretty cool. All right, so we can't attack, but that's okay. We just bought ourselves another turn. 
or go on Amazon and just get like a 1980s ninja mask and then just modify it. As long as you got full cotton, and I think she made like a double layer thing. She found some video on YouTube, and then you put like a, I think it's just a paper towel in between. And cool thing is you can wash them. And then also um, obviously take the paper towel out. And I know um, hydrogen peroxide has a really big benefit on a lot of the, if you do have an existing mask, you can put it on there and let it dry. And I think it's completely like does its thing. So, all right, Memnonic wall showing up. Interesting. No target. I think I won't fall for that. Angel and I are talking about masks today, too. Yeah, pretty easy to do if you got a sewing machine, even if you don't. It's not like people don't have enough time, right? All right, this is enough land to choke a small country. Let's uh, go get some more, revealing our lack of... Ugh, what a kick in the crotch. Like, Tron needs any help. This is really ridiculous. All right, um, I can just block that, at least, and... All right, I'm going to hold on to that. Better to bluff. Yeah, and I made, speaking of that little fight, the fresh flowers and the, the plague doctor mask, if you follow me on Facebook, I finished that up. This is true. What a strange game. I do believe that was the only Denrova horror, or they're just not finding the other one. Okay. I want to cycle this in response. Rebel land. Cut back on our options here. Hopefully we draw. Ugh. We're going to have to trip that flicker. Stupid drawn. Yeah, we took way too long. Remember, this is the same game where we just had an ocean of time between... um. What do you call getting? He, he might have another one in hand here. Getting our uh, planes online here. We'll go like this. Come on. The Plague Bearer Mask. I think it's called the uh, Plague Doctor. Is that if you like Google it, that'll give you like the typical look. It was really creepy though, just like anybody's phones. Like just the other day, there was some like ad for like. Oh, get your plague doctor mask here. And I'm like, how did it know that? Because the damn computer is listening in on me. So f really, really creepy. It was just like, oh, my goodness. All right, so there are no cave of temptations out. So I can just block if I need to. Drew a Galena's Knight, which is absolutely worthless. I don't care so much about that. I'll let that go. Not that I have a choice. COP Blue representing. We're up three minutes, but that can be eaten up really quickly with circle of protection, so got to be very careful. What do we have here? What is this new devilry? All right. Mystical teaching shows up. He's going to go find what? Let's see. We'll kill this and this. What's he going to show us? Ephemerate. One mana left. That sucks. At least there's no Denrova Horror, though. Curious what he's going to pop here. Man, I wish I had one of our many counter spells, but they're all hiding from us in place of lands. Interesting. With seven cards in hand, you're tapped out, and you go for a Mold Drifter. Hmm. Okay. Come on over, Dignitary. I'll block you. Machi's more than like <laughs> mutagenic growth. Whoa! The Illuminati. There's that mold drifter effort. Throwing stuff in the yard. Come on, something good. Okay, I'll take it. We at least have an option here. Let's bring this out. We'll attack here. When I counter ephemerate, if I do, that's um that goes to into exile, correct? Exile it as it resolves. But if it doesn't resolve, I forget, does it go to the graveyard? Cast this card from exile that way. Yeah, wish my youngest was in here, he'd know that rule. I think I would. 
If it fizzles, it goes to the yard. Mm. We'll see what he hits here. What are you targeting, sucker? Where's it going? The wall, eh? I'll give it a chance. Try to turn off this shenanigans. I mean, one flicker and he gets it right back, but we'll see. There's a lot of cards in our opponent's hand. Come on. Let's fall into a relic. I mean, he could just uh, mystical teachings up a flicker here. Not looking so good for us. We can just pretend that we have a uh, an answer. I think I'm just going to block that stone horn. I'm half watching, still trying to figure out this new oh user interface. If you're wondering what Shirazamon and Little Fight are going back and forth about, Twitch has a new... Um, moderator view feature I'm the same with you Shiraz I looked at it for two seconds I'm like ah, not my problem I was just like that's not something I really want to focus too much of my attention on um, sure I'll block unless they're playing curfew I'll be alright opponents at five minutes I doubt this will go to time but never know oh that feels good we'll gain some more life God, he could like mystical teachings, find anything he wants. Even if we do that, he's got enough to bring it back. We got to just let that go. Saving our counter magic for something that could maybe save us the game. This is the mold drifter sit back. It's a nice little counter strategy, though, with the Stonehorn Dignitary all steroided up the, via Cave of Temptation. Yeah, you got to share some of those stats with me afterwards. The little fight I'm always pretty ignorant about what's happening when, where. I just upload it. Video sounds and looks good. I'm good. Okay, here we go. He's a grabbing the wall. You think four relics would be enough? What's he grabbing? Ephemerate, eh? All right. I guess there's no ghostly flicker in his hand. It's just, or he just doesn't see the mystical teachings. I'm not sure. Well, all right. Let's do this, 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 and then this, this, this. And we take eight. That hurts. Uh, it's better than 13. Oh, we have a we live pretty close to an airport, so sometimes the wind mixes in with the uh, big jets taking off, so you might hear that. Actually, my computer fan's going a little crazy right now, too, so could be that in Chimsky. Or maybe it's in your neck of the woods. Who knows? Ephemerate. Hmm. I'm just going to try to stop this. I know there's so many things he can do here with mystical teachings. Just trying to buy time here. i got a good five minutes on him, so speaking of that nature, I'm just going to do that. I mean, you could technically, if I was up like 10 minutes, I could just start activating Circle of Protections all the time and use it as kind of a power sink. God, it's about time. We're halfway through our deck, and we haven't seen any of these yet. Uh, bottom, top. All right. Let's attack here. I think for the sake of life. So you got the moment's peace. We'll drop this. Gain our life back, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Do you think mutate might make infect viable? It's interesting. I'm going to have to see the whole set. I think Probably, it's usually on Fridays, those things seem to get spoiled all the way, and then they are quiet on the weekend, but this morning I saw stuff being updated still, so I'm not quite sure. Anybody know the percentage of how many cards are total and how many are out there now? I haven't seen enough commons yet. They always seem to save those for the very end. And... Oh, crap. That's game. 
we're not going to be able to do much against this. I mean, we've got everything protected except Stonehorn. If, if we can, actually, if we can get rid of that, it might be pretty funny. We can uh, prevent everything except this eight here, but that's quite a bit of fuel there, so. Maybe I should have brought in my COP white. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Relic. So nice of you to join us now. I'd do it now for... He could mystical in response. He's not going to. I'll drop this out. Should have really... Uh... Yes. Grab a steel. I've got enough blockers here. Shouldn't have used so much white mana, though. That was kind of a foolish attempt. Block here. Two minutes to go. I don't think we're going to be able to live long enough here. So we're going to have to live another turn and then be able to... I mean, we can stop. What is that? Eight? We're just going to still take three, four, five. Yeah. Not looking our, looking our way here. And there's that. Okay. Tron is fun. <laughs> All right. I'll say this to this. Get rid of Denrova. Surprise, sucker. It's blue. To this. I'll say this to this. This. And then we will block the Gigantor Rhino that's stomping out fires left and right. Pow. Where are they? Let's rock with this. Hmm. Well, Guardian actually might be a pretty good pull here. I'll say nope. I'm going to drop our dude. I'm going to run into counter magic. I'll drop this. At least we'll have blockers for that if he allows it if we run into counter magic here i'm just gonna scoop yep unfortunately this deck usually does pretty good against tron but sure didn't that game i'm gonna take a break guys we're gonna show you the new um mechanics of the new set uh layer of goofiness ikoria we'll be back in just a few ikoria layer of behemoths mechanic spotlight mutate Ikoria's wildlife is, let's call it, evolutionarily aggressive. The creatures out there are not messing around. They have the advantage in every encounter, and if they don't, they'll grow a new body part to gain it. This adaptability is unlike anything you've seen before, and it's represented on cards by the new ability, Mutate. Mutate, as seen on this lengthy being, is a new keyword that will have your creatures stretching their genetic boundaries, changing sizes, and developing new abilities right before your eyes. Here's how it works. Here's Cloud Piercer. Now let's say you want to cast Cloud Piercer. As you cast a creature spell that has Mutate, you have two choices. One, just cast it normally. Hopefully it resolves and enters the battlefield. Effective, but kind of boring. Hardly worth a video. Choice two is much more exciting. Casting a creature spell using its Mutate ability requires a target, a non-human creature you own that's already on the battlefield. Mosscoat Goriak, you're up. Casting a creature spell with Mutate means you pay the Mutate cost rather than paying the mana cost. As Cloud Piercer resolves, you choose to put it either on top of Mosscoat Goriak or underneath it. The two cards mutate into a single creature. Multiple cards? A single creature? This begs so many questions! First, what does our new creature look like? Well, it depends. The resulting creature is everything found on the top card plus the abilities of every card in the pile. So if you put Cloud Piercer on top, the creature formerly known as Mosscoat Goriak is now named Cloud Piercer. It's a red 5-4 dinosaur with Mutate, Reach, this triggered ability, and Vigilance. If Cloud Piercer went to the bottom, the creature would still be named Mosscoat Goriak, and it would be a 2-4 green beast with the same suite of abilities. As you can see, in most cases, if the creature card with Mutate has better stats than the existing creature, you put it on top. If it doesn't, you put it on the bottom. But remember that in addition to power and toughness, 
The creature's converted mana cost, colors, creature types, and name are all determined by the top card. Many mutate cards, and a few other ones like Zagoth Mamba here, have an ability that triggers whenever this creature mutates. Now, little dude's kinda… Eh, little. Time to upgrade. Every time a new creature card joins the pile, all the whenever this creature mutates abilities will trigger. This ability on the new card, the ones on the existing pile, all of them. You can put those abilities on the stack in any order. So later in the game, if a new creature card joins the pile, all of these abilities will trigger again. And you can just keep going. Let's mutate again. This time, Cloud Piercer onto Bristling Boar. Cloud Piercer has better stats, so let's put it on top. The resulting creature is named Cloud Piercer, but it has an ability that says Bristling Boar can't be blocked by more than one creature. What the what? Don't worry. Anytime an ability refers to the creature it's on by name, it really just means this creature. This ability works even though the creature changed names, and Cloud Piercer will be tougher to block. In all of these mutations, did Cloud Piercer enter the battlefield? No. It's still the same creature it was, it just changed characteristics. Going back to Moscow Goriak, if it was tapped before it mutated, the resulting creature will still be tapped. If it could attack this turn, it still can. Mutating onto a creature doesn't give it summoning sickness again. If Moscow Goriak had any counters or any auras or equipment attached to it, the new creature still has all of those. Same creature, new form. Remember that when you cast a creature spell with Mutate, you need a target. And if a spell has a target, that target can disappear in response. Let's say you cast Cloud Piercer, but in response, Moscow Goriak is destroyed. What happens? If a creature spell with Mutate has a missing or illegal target as it tries to resolve, it just enters the battlefield without mutating. This is a failsafe if the target isn't there. Of course, spells with Mutate can still be countered, and if they are, they'll end up in the graveyard. And one more thing before we wrap up. I've said card a lot in this video, but you can mutate onto tokens as well, as long as you own them and they aren't human. If you're using printed cards to represent the tokens, this gets a little easier to visualize, but mutate works the same way. Mutate unlocks awesome potential in even the smallest creatures. F this is a warm alert. Beware of the movement known as propaganda. The following individuals are wanted for multiple crimes. Fugitive Rose, Lidify, last seen escaping the planet Hopper. Fugitive Mastermind, the Lexicon, considered extremely dangerous. Citizens with information should contact a warm agent immediately. Withholding information is a violation of Phyrexian law. Generous rewards will be given to any citizens with helpful information. And we're back. Sorry, cut that a little quick. Well, yuck, look at this hand. More look at this. Alrighty, yeah, that, uh, why the human an interaction? That's what I'm curious about. I haven't given it too much of a search on Scryfall or any of the uh, search engines, but what do they got against humans with mutate? I guess humans can mutate. We do it all the time. It's called cancer. All right, we will mulligan this. Pure. All right, I guess we'll keep this. Boop. We've got our mana set, uh, but I'd kind of like to have cycle as a first turn, so I'll throw the island out and we'll go... Oh, two cards. All right. Let's... I like the combo here. Watch, we're going up against Burn or Stompy. We'll <laughs> be like, crap! <laughs> oh, well. That's starting off too hot here. I'll keep the spell up in case we run into a first turn lightning bolt, but otherwise we'll just grab the barons and uh, go for broke. Dreamer Stango, shame that none of the creatures with mutate are mutants. This is true. Hmm. All right, let's see what this guy's doing. I'm in Z94. If he doesn't hurry it up, I'm going to scoop and go to somebody else. That's been happening a lot more lately. I've had so many games where it's a person, you know, I drop my land and it takes a person like 50 seconds to untap and play something, and they're not writing anything. Sometimes I'm about to quit and they'll be like, hey, you know, like the show, or there's be something like that. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, at least there's a reason to it. Hey, back at you, Dreamer Stingo. Remember what I said about... It's like, oh crap, hopefully they're not up against Stompy because we just pitched uh, Prismatic Strands in our hand because we had a double mulligan, but we went from almost all lands to just uh, one land, and it was an Ash Baron, and then to the hand we had to keep, so... Uh, 
Now this matchup is about 50-50 depending. If we get our big old fat 4-4 out with a dispel behind it, we're, we're feeling pretty good. But That Tron matchup, definitely usually a favorable one, but didn't show up last game. People are multi-queuing a lot more often probably. And just, uh, yeah, I guess so, if they're waiting for a real tournament to start and they're doing this thing. I think if there was a chart, I'm up like 300% on doing that, where it's just like, quit. Now, if this is elves, we're in real big trouble this first game. Okay, it's Stompy. Just a little bit of trouble. I got to pile up Stompy again. Sometimes I miss slinging those cards. All right, we'll represent that we've got the uh, Prismatic. How cool would it be to go back in time, right? And throw the Godhead out because we knew it in retrospect. We're going to draw another one, but then we have access to Prismatic. It's the only reason we're able to stay in against these aggro starts. We get one of our Azorius dudes out, block, tap, boom. You know the drill, straight out of the Boros Bully playbook. How Bounce works with Mutate, though? I'm not quite sure. It does seem like you can get two for one a lot. Crashing in for five. I got nothing on this. Got a very cool deck. I almost showed it to you today. Um, I forget. I've got the guy's name written on the deck list, but he's a, a little bit of a new youth. Now, what a strange play. I did that afterwards. Hmm. Must not have another green spell. Possible. I mean, they've got Aquarian Ranger. That wouldn't even make sense. All right, well, that really blows, but we're going to do this and... Uh, I mean, you could wait to kill this and then rain skip the Rancor, but I'm just going to try to draw a creature or something. He's probably sitting on a uh, Savage Swipe, so... Drawn right away here. That looks never a dead card, but... Ugh, picked the wrong color there. I was hoping we'd get one of our eight dudes out. It probably would have met with a Savage Swipe, but still... This way, if we draw one and we're even alive, then that's six, seven. I don't think we're going to be able to pull this one off. Yeah, that was a very clunky video. It's the reason it took five minutes. I was like, good grief. And then it's like, oh, and by the way, all these errors that we didn't plan around, well, we'll just call it a, uh, if, it, if it says the creature's name, then it's just this card. It's like, okay, that's nice if you've got a digital reminder, but man. There's going to be a lot of kitchen tables that are scratching their head like in the old days. Interrupt. Instant. Wait, which one's quicker? I don't know. Well, we can at least do that. Let's say no to that. We can use one of our spells for this. I'm about to concede here. Yield through this turn. Yeah, wouldn't that be sad? Because I hate that set so much already. It hasn't come out yet, but because of the virus and everything being a shortage, that it ends up being like underrepresented, and so the cards are worth more. And then they're like, "Oh, look, everybody's after these cards because because of Godzilla." It's like, no, because <laughs> it didn't saturate the market. Oh boy. Well, at least our opponent won't know what we're on. I guess I bottom bottom, and hope we draw something relevant. That's not relevant. Yeah. We're going to be at one. I'm I'm not even going to show them what we got. Let's go off, and hopefully we don't... What was that? Double or triple mulligan? Those are the worst kind of mulligans. It's like, all lands. Oh, never mind. One land. Come on. Okay lands. You're like, geez. All right, so we will bring in green here. I don't bring in uh, COP green against elves. Quite a few reasons. Uh, we're going to lose the relics. One to spell. Now... Can I spell it targets you or a permanent I control? That might be okay. It's a little clunky, though. This is mostly for a black um, thing that, you you know, you can dodge uh, celestial whatever lights or edicts and such and big fireballs to the face. Pretty cool that way. I'm not quite sure if Holy Light deserves a spot here. Got to be careful. It's fun to bring in, but other than Aquarian Ranger... Just like Electric, I don't think it's that good against Stompy. Two Dispels. We've got a spot for one more thing. I'll probably bring in an Echoing Truth just for a little bit of a... What do you call a stopgap measure? These are going to be a house. These not so much, but with a 4-4 behind it. And then uh, this should be all right. We just got to 
have an okay opening hand that we can keep. Like I said, all lands to no lands to, you know, against an aggro deck, it's a recipe for disaster for any deck. So, yes. All right, let's keep this. Yeah, we got this. We'll keep. Now all we need is our enchantment. Ponders are preordains to show us where they live. We should be all right. Famous last words, Savage Swipe's always a thing, so I probably want to play this before this so that I can at least react to it by tapping it. With all those hate bears, it would be cool if you splashed Swirling Sandstorm. What's cooler is to watch a Blue-Red Delver, which is a great matchup because they lean on red, um, squirm. This beats Boros pretty easily. But again, you know, like a Bully variant with a Rally the Peasants, if they've sometimes they can just have the nuts. And I will admit... I will admit this this loss to burn the other day. I was like, are you kidding me? But it was like that last game we just had where you're where you're just like, wow, okay, uh, that was random. Doesn't make any sense. It's like all lands, no lands, all lands, one of those. All right, so we've got extras here. They probably do have um this is a this is a because they they might bring in um uh, what is it? Gleeful Sabotage, right? And that can kill the Outlander because it's an artifact. So it's like, do we play it now or later? But I think Savage Swipe's more likely to come up early. So I'm going to lead off with this. Problem is, we're going to have to keep those counter spells back for those in game two. You stop playing Crypt Gift version 2.0? Oh, I don't want to saturate shows. I showed it once. I'm still playing it. I run into a lot of mono black online, and so it just feels like kind of redundant. So there's the two two. Now we can sit back with strands, and hopefully it's not. We didn't show many. Uh, I think game three we're going to have to really lean on gleeful sabotage knowledge and, and holding back counters and stuff, and not overextending. But yeah, I try to keep it a different deck every show. It's one of the benefits of not playing for uh, not playing for money. I tell you. All right. This is just, we're just going to slow roll this. Next turn will be the preordained Galena's Knight if we don't draw into a land, but for right now, I'm going to try to bait a little something, something. No Blackburn Rovers? Yes, Lovecraft. That's actually, I think, what I'm going to play next week. I was very tempted to this week. I'll be with you. I keep wanting to change one or two cards in that, and then I, I kind of see the genius of, of that 75, and I'm like, I'm just going to leave it alone really well done yeah there's a really cool uh youtube one on blackburn rovers and i was just like wow that's a cool cool deck all right that's a very strange target we're gonna let that go and hopefully our oblivion ring and boy that's gonna be a that's almost like a three for one the young wolf won't trip. This won't trip. That's like two, three. That's like a four for one if I can drop that on there and he doesn't have vines. We'll see. Yeah, Little Fight's going to love that deck. If you could send that to um, Little Fight, I'd appreciate it there, Lovecraft. It's such a pretty deck. Uh, I'm going to play this now just because I've got another one in hand. I just want access to it because of cards like um, Savage Swipe, which he'd already have played if, if he had it, so... We'll just leave that out and you'll do this turn. Yeah, it's pretty much black burn, and it looks like, oh, it's it's a very interesting combination of a bunch of cards that usually aren't good enough, but you put them all together, and it boy, it just gets there. I don't know how else to say it really. Alright. I'll slow roll this. We'll kill that wolf. We won't kill it, we'll just put it in jail. And that's a whole lot of cards. Now get the Pilgrim online. Probably preordain and then Pilgrim if we don't draw another land. We'll see. But you see, when you have the early strands and your mana's not screwed up, this is usually how the first game feels against Stompy, but it sure wasn't the case last game, was it? All right. Hmm. I haven't seen this this land before. I don't think I've ever seen that played. Not bad. 
Yeah, Chid3, that's who it is. I'm always happy to share the love. Well, we've got answers for that. But let's wait a little bit on that. Let's preordain. Show us a land. Cool. Ooh, I like that too. I'll say bottom though, because we're just going to have to grab this. I'm going to go grab, um, you know what? The big fat aura to gain a bunch of life. We will go grab. This. All right. I'll sit back and still wait. Very worried about um, vines, both with the river boa's future being stuck inside an oblivion ring as well as the steel of the godhead getting countered here. All right, time to dance. Let's block here. I'll call green. I might be giving vines a little bit too much respect. Time you play this game like 10 times, you'll notice if you can get still the god to stick, you just win. Green. Now, Hunger of the Howl Pack, maybe? Is that why I did that? No. One card left. Hmm. Well, we've got another one. I'm going to lean on it just because we have another one. So if it gets vines here, I'm all right. At least we'll know he doesn't have vines. Okay. This is just such a simple wording. Lifelink can't be blocked. Love it. Ah, so great. Bonk. Everybody loves Omog's Crusher. Well, this is kind of a mini brother of Omog's Crusher, if you really think about it. A four-point lifelinking turn is kind of like hitting for eight. It's not, but there's some parallels you can draw. All right. I've got some shenanigans going on here. I think that's going to be met with an Oblivion Ring. So now that I have two targets in the Pilgrim, I do believe I'm going to do that. I'll block here. Down he comes. One card in hand. Come on, play it, play it. Okay, cool. Now I know he's naked. Let's attack. I always ring for a ring there, right? Let's go find some land. Uh, that's cool. We'll say top, top. We'll drop here. Always leave up blue. It's a little scarier. We're not in any sort of rush for... Uh... He's going to put that on the boa next turn. It's okay. Because we've got the CLP green right behind it. And the strands in the house. That's pretty hard to lose from here. A, maybe like if he double draws um, a Gleeful Sabotage, that could really ruin our day because he'd get his creatures back, our, our guy. But we got another Steel of the Godhead in our hand. And as you can see, you almost don't need the strands when the combo's online. Usually I like to have a Dispel up with that mana. Three main, you usually have it. But, you know, that might have been the difference too against um, Tron. Bringing in that fourth dispel is usually what I used to do before I put hindering light in. So I'm going to actually make a note to myself to add a fourth dispel again. Not that we had the best draws, but as that deck shows, you need all the help you can get against it. And I don't know if uh, hedging towards mono black is really the play. Maybe we just say, hey, elves and mono black are bad. Everything else is pretty much game. And this is probably where we get the scoop. But this will really signal a gleeful sabotage. 
coming in. And we're really going to have to hold our counter spells back because Gleeful Sabotage is a sorcery and the spells aren't going to do much against that. So I'll drop this out. I, yeah, I could have probably put the Steel of the Godhead on there. Remember, you don't need white for this. You could play an all blue deck if you needed to or an all white deck, no blue. Uh, when you're casting, remember, you don't need white. You can do it with all blue. The problem with Ruin of Protections, though, is that you have to use white to trigger it. So that's why I'm not running it. All right. So there's a 1-1. One, one. Hopefully we don't go the same route as this is what happened in the Tron matchup, but then we, we, we dropped it. So I am going to bring in Holy Light now. I'm going to take out the Dispels and bring in two Holy Lights because I forgot about River Boa. The combination of that and the... Uh, the, the uh, What's that? The uh, Vault Scourge and stuff, I, th I think, too, is probably the right number there. We can um, pick our dudes apart here. Got to be a little careful in this game now. Will Hindering Light work against Gleeful Sabotage? It will. Just don't know if it's worth another trip. Hmm. I think I'm going to keep it like this. Don't want to get too cutesy. Again, this is like my tech against mostly mono black for edict effects because we kind of lean on one creature a little bit too much. And it's flexible and it replaces itself. So, But I really like these are normally in the deck, the three dispels, and I'd really like to get that fourth back in there. I have two alkalites just for the um, mono black. I'm not quite sure if that's uh, how I want to roll with this in the future. We'll see. Savage Swipe can kill lots of stuff. You are right. Yeah, it's pretty hard to get pro green. I've tried. I've, I've even thought about tinkering around with the colors. All right, we got Fix, Counter, and uh, if something gets out of control, like a 4-2, Scargon will be all right. We'll keep this. It's not the greatest hand, but I'm not going to whine too much about it. I'm going to ponder into a Ash Baron, so that might be relevant. Yeah, sometimes Dreamer Stingo, it's, we'll see if we like to, we like it, but I, I forgot between the River Boa, the, the Ranger, and that, that's 12 creatures, so I think it's worth bringing in about two of those in there, especially if we can use this to go find it. All right, that's enough lands. Let's go find some goods here. All right, speak of the devil, I don't want to draw this, I'll draw this and this, and uh, in the meantime, we'll say nope. Sit back on a counter spell, hopefully stop some big fat 2-2, two -two, and then we'll mop up the pieces. I'd really like to see a river boa dropped here. <laughs> Good luck regenerating out of negative triggers. This is the way of the world, my friends. Oh, here comes a pit sulk if the uh, tempo math is anything to be said. I've run out of mask materials myself. Not the COVID masks, but you know everybody knows I like to make masks. I had enough for about three or four, and I built them all like in the first day or two of isolation, painted them, and fixed them already. And I'd have to say that's probably masks number, I don't know, 64 and 65 that I've made. And unfortunately, about 60 of them are in the house. It's a lot of masks in one house. Okay. Well, I'm going to lean on this. We're going to take quite a bit of damage here, but we'll have the counter spell for any sort of gigantor mechanics. Looking at you, 3-3 uh, three, three Elephant Guide. Double Vault Scourge. He asked Dreamer Stingo. He got <laughs> Vince McMahon. <laughs> nice. Got to get the Ric Flair in there when I'm in the house. Rancor. On to that. I think that's worth countering. Let's just get that in the yard. That represents like a a shock every turn if that stays out so this is all right i would really like to have the uh holy light there but come on just end the turn don't do the quarian thing he's got it come on another one one false courage shoot all right Now to do it now or later? That's the question. Should I wait or should I do it now? If I wait, I take less damage, but I can also run into vines. I'm going to wait. 
That way I only take two damage next turn, and then I can Oblivion Ring whatever uh, shenanigans are left. I do like this art. I wouldn't put it on a wall or anything, but it's it's all in on that style. I think I've mentioned that before. All right. Let's do this now. Oh, you'll do the turn. I'm going to get rid of two problem boys, and he's, he's stuck on one mana, so that really helps, and that's why we only take two for this turn. That feels all right. Definitely going to lean on grabbing that Pit Sulk if that goes down. Oh, that was that'd be funny, wouldn't it? Let's uh, we'll go grab Pit Sulk. Be nice to get a creature here one of these years. Our land's definitely right. We'll feign that we have some sort of dispel trick, cycle Ash Barons for that plane, and really want to get a uh, Guardian of the Guild pack online here. Fortune favors the bold. Boy, is that true. In every aspect of human existence, that always seems to be the case. Taken three. You're in single-digit territory. This sucks. What has he got? Problem with our opponent being a little screwed is that they uh, will tend to have a lot of the answers because that's why they kept the hand, right? Cycle this for white. I've got another one there, another one there. Okay. I'm going to have a repeat of the last one. Ah, <sighs> yeah, 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 yeah. One creature and we'd be feeling good here. I did play a land this turn, didn't I? Dan Dan, yes, the 4 1 Island Walk. I love that. All right, I don't think I had Island Walk. I always gave it it with uh, fish liver oil. It was one of my old things. Enchant the land, start coming over the 4 1 unblockable. That was always good times. I'll drop another one. We're going to get rid of the biggest problem. I'll feign like we've got counter spell. There's a way we only go take two. Problem is, we got six on the board next turn. Yikes. Island home, yes. That was pretty bad. Two, three. Let's bring out the Pilgrim. I can at least block something. He's probably got that Savage Swipe. We'll say yes to this. We'll go grab one of these. Now then, I can't really block anything. I've got two of these. If I put this on there, it's just going to be a 2-3 with lifelink. I think that's the play. Uh, Savage Swipe kills it. We gain the life, and we've still got kind of a reprieve after that. And then we can, if we draw into a, uh, we can, we can double do these next turn. So I'm going to lean on that just because of the way lifelink actually works. I can take lethal, and it's not like vampiric link. So maybe this will make him not want to attack. At least we're going to know if he's got Savage Swipe in the hand, right? Lethal Sabotage would be brutal here. Not liking our chances unless we can untap. Let me open up my yard here. I feel really naked without a prismatic strands. I know I'm always bitching about flicker effects and you know all the uh, Tron shenanigans, but I'd be very happy to give up prismatic. I could see that. I wouldn't really argue that too hard, like for that not being bad. Hey, look at that! We get a little uh, reprieve from the governor. All right, now we come back. The tide has shifted. Oh, good times. One, two, three, four. I'll put this on the bottom. Oh, but uh, I kind of want to draw that. Let's uh, let's bring out the uh, guardian just for insurance. I'll wait to go crazy next turn. Booyah. Yeah, subtle, dark, moody, and ultimately terrifying. That's right. I think everybody's had one of those 
currents is swimming in the ocean you look down you're just like think you see something move your heart rate starts going on your imagination kicks in you're just like oh shoot, shoot. <laughs> all right guardian's not that safe with two burning tree emissaries out being that they can kill the guardian if they're a four four so i'm not too thrilled about those but We'll see. However, with access to double of these, I'm going to kick the burning tree emissary out of the equation as long as they'll let me and we don't run into any vine tricks. Vine tricks. Vine tricks. Hey, hey, hey. Is this a vines? It's a vines. Okay. I wish we had a sky fisher. I did run them for a while. Help with mana. Might be better in Heliod's Pilgrim. I'm not quite sure. Get rid of that dude. And we're still go cause just going to chill here. It's buying time. We've got, I believe it's a preordain coming up next. Yep, that's why I was saying Nimchimsky. Got to be careful. I'm not out of the woods yet. He could uh, savage swipe that burning tree and down goes Guardian. What is this? Ooh, all right. Well, that really blows. I'm going to block that. Doesn't have trample. I need all the life I can get. Put that on there. Come on. Give me some goods. This is the kind of stuff I hate. It's like, what are you waiting for? You don't have access to counter magic. There's no islands or foil in your hand. You've got one card. Even if you did have an island or the foil, you'd need the other. Tick tock, tick tock, says the impatient bald guy. We like that a lot. Boy, top, top. Yeah, let's do that. Top, top. Let's rock like that. We'll feign some ignorance here and just keep smashing over. We can just call green and laugh all the way to the bank. Bounce the BTE. Or we could bounce our journey to nowhere. That'd be interesting. Of course, with access to Gleeful Sabotage, this is game three. It might not be the best play here. He has an 18 life and he's got double our life total, so I've got to be a little careful there. Part of me doesn't even want to use the strands here, just kind of let it roll. You gonna use the vines? All right. I'm gonna imply that I have counterspell by doing a little unmove action there. We'll call green. Stumpy's worst nightmare card. Prismatic is so ridiculous, deadly ridiculous. Hidden spider. Have fun staring at that the whole game. I don't have any flyers. Expects me to have Mold Drifter, I guess. Let's rock like this onto this. Are the boats empty in that artwork? That would suck. Completely leave out the dread angle, right? I'm just going to do it now. I don't know. Yeah, let's do it now. Vines might show up. That would, that would put me in a tight spot. As it is now, he hits for two. Guide falls off. Good times. Oh, what happened there? That was strange. Was that a rage quit? Hmm. Where'd the game go? That was weird. Okay. Well, we'll create another one. See what happens there. Pretty sure we had that one in the bag. Very long games. It'd be nice if we just squish somebody for once here. Let's go.
Hidden Spider. I haven't seen that since like 2006. It used to be the card. Then Scattershot started showing up. I'm with that. I got little dirt spots on the screen. Audrey's dad. Oh, I hope he's not playing teachings. This is going to make for a really slow show with this. Please be on aggro or something. I, I just want this to be uh, quicker. He's got a very cool build of, um, what is it? Um, I'll keep this. He has a very cool build of uh, teachings that I even like. It pretty much counter everything and using a devious cover-up. It's a very flexible deck the way it was done. We'll keep this. Ah, come on, not control. Artron. RDW would be nice. I'm just going to rock through here, get our mana right, drop a plane, and go for here. I think he's on that build. It's bad news for the show because it's going to be a very long match. Good news is I have nothing else to do after this, so we're in it for the long haul, baby. Woo! There's that, and protection from red's not going to be very good, but it might buy us some time here. Lead off with the knight. Black's going to show up, start niddling our dudes up. Oh, interesting. That's a new take on something. Okay, I'm not quite sure what he's on now. I thought this would be the teachings build, but I guess it isn't. Alrighty, we are the aggro. I'm going to just throw this out there. In case there's an echoing truth, I'm going to mix up our creature types here. If this gets eaten, that's fine. We take a valuable counterspell out of the equation for a 2-2 bear, really. It implies that maybe they don't have that much control on board, like a uh, journey to nowhere. I'm not quite sure what they could be on for removal. Probably bounce. Could be acid trip. Okay, well, that comes true. We can always Oblivion Ring that. But if this is Acid Drip, I want to save that for uh, the Acid. Here we go. Here's another one. Hopefully we can exhaust the Counter Magic and the uh, Journey Count and uh, sit back on our Counter Spell if we draw the Enchantment and put them on a Quaker Clock. It's going to take quite a while to get them at 2. But matchups like this is where Guardian can really shine. Yeah, that Pestilence Trip deck I saw that mentioned. I didn't give it more than a brief glance, though, so. All right. Well, we're kind of stuck doing that here. I guess we could have let it resolve and then Oblivion ringed it, but that's what I think. I'm getting a panic vibe from... I'm going to drop this and get two creatures out. I don't think they've got the mass removal here. Let's rock like this. Get some extra threats out. Fain that we've got Counterspell and Attack. This should reveal something. Lifelink, interesting. I haven't seen that played since about 2009. Well, that's enough of that. Well, good grief. Uh, I guess we'll sit back. I thought we'd see an Azorius matchup, right? Neither of them are running a... Well, I can't really quite save for right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm just happy this isn't Tron or Teachings, just for the time. Got good matchups against both. Probably a little less than with Teachings, but... Okay. I'd really like our counter magic to show up. I have had... Game after game, entire afternoons where it just feels like, man, this has a lot of counter magic, and today it is not showing up. So it's kind of a little wee bit frustrating. I've got an opening. I'm going to take it, seeing as how he's playing around these. I'm just going to keep kind of overextending until we can really drive it home with our... This is why I run that Pilgrim, guys. Draws like this, where you're just like, man, I just need that an extra spell or two. So it's like number five. Hmm...
And the only way I think an acid trip deck with that kind of mana can exist is because Tron and company are able to keep true aggro out of the format with turn four reliability and flickering uh, stone horns and such. Get rid of that. I think the metagame gets a lot healthier. All right. Dropping this. Ungall in here, guys. He's got a counter. That's cool. I'm just going to try to kill him with volume here. If I can get that Seraph of Dawn out of the question or out of the equation, I can feign like we've got some counter magic. Seraph of Dawn is one of those cards, very clunky, but if you can get it down, it does do a lot of work. It's like it's already enchanted all in itself. The body of a uh, Spire Golem and. Okay, well, remember what I said about a long matchup? This might be one of those. Representing Counterspell, as are we. Let me hold back here. Don't have anything to do with that island. I just want to feign that I have something that resembles not lands. This is probably some blink technology, I think. That <laughs> beautiful one with the body of a spire golem. Yeah, you wouldn't want that. That'd be kind of cold, right? <laughs> I just meant the 2-4. <laughs> we'll take that. Prismatic's not going to be that good in this matchup. Interesting call there. They probably got a counter spell here. There's already been one. Let me try it anyway. If we can get rid of that Seraph. Kind of on the same removal package, aren't we? Ooh, double Sunlance in the yard. He's really betting on things not going the white way. We'll go like this. I could attack, say, white, and then none of our stuff would do any damage. So. Supported our local brewery here in town. I've never had so much beer in my life the last, like, four days. I had beers once in a while, and then, you know, weeks or months go by, and I'm more of a wine guy, but, yeah feels like I have like 20 loaves of bread in my gut after I've finished drinking. It's very good, but man, oh man, just trying to support the local uh, brewery here in our town. Fantastic stuff, but all right, let's draw something that matters. That matters, and that matters too. Ooh, I like that a lot. Guardian's going to be pretty cool here. I'll say uh, top, top. I'm in a position to wait here. If I wait till next turn, I'm going to play this. I'm going to wait. Question of the chat. What should I lead with, Guardian or Steel? I think it should be Steel, but I don't know if they have any answer for Guardian. They might have enough uh, cards to not make it really matter. We're down a lot on cards here. Not really going to be able to do much damage if we don't get uh, life in there. So Steel of the Godhead might be the call. When we do have more of them, we only have three Guardians. We have technically five Steel of the Godheads with the uh, Pilgrim. All right, this, I'm going to try to do this. He's too good of a player to fall for this counter, but I'm just going to try to keep his life under check. At least we know there's not any blink in his hand, right? We'll rock like this. Let's see. Put the Fear of God in him a little bit there. Nobody says anything? All right. Mall Drifter in the house. Okay, COP blue and white. This is going to be a very long game two. I better click accordingly. This is game one. Yeah, it feels like game nine. All right, here we are. Let me lead with him. No counter? Okay, I'm going to go all in here. If he has Echoing Truth, I'm going to leave it on this guy because I don't want to get eight for one. Let's see if we can pull it off. Hey, look at that. Good times. Let's rock like this. It's gaining two. We're hitting for four. That'll put him at one. I'm just going to let this through. I'll keep Prismatic for another time. OK, 
Careful not to go too long, though. We do have relics main. Ouch. That sucks. Okay. Thanks a lot, deck. That's great. Let's rock like this. Come over for six. Yes, it will be. And I'm behind on time because I'm talking and hosting and such. But we could maybe run them out of cards. Interesting choice, Crustacean. What does this thing do? We're going to block like crazy here. Actually, I can't really do that. Let me just try to... I'll let him gain the life here. If I call Prismatic on white, then my guy doesn't kill his, so be careful. That sort of stuff. What do we have here? We can always do something else. So he makes that Gigantor. And then I will just say... Um, we'll tap this. Unfortunately, I'll say blue... He's going to gain the life. Man, this is going to be a long game. Godzilla Crustacean. I didn't know you could do that at instant speed. That's why he's playing it. That's pretty cool. Hey, you got something to do with your extra mana? There you go. It's just so much bounce in the format, but it does have Hexproof now, so that deals with that. It's a nice little call. i got to remember that. That's a neat way to pour your extra mana into something. Heck, maybe I should play that in this. It is called the Untouchables, after all. All right, deck. That's enough of that. We'll drop here. Let's go. Gonna get double blocked. Do we lose the mole drifter? Cool. All right. Look at these awesome counter spells posing as lands in our hands. Little does our opponent know how awesome our hand is. Guardian is so good. It's it's like when you play um, Standard Bear Main. There's just games where you're just like, well, that saves us this game. And just shuts that dude off. Okay, that really helps. Kind of wish this was a Ona's Grace. I was very tempted to play the Ona's Grace over a few of the other cards there. Uh, I'm going to kind of go all in here. Let's say no. I'm going to just go for it here. I've got the life threat. If we get another prismatic, we'll be all right. All right. I'm going to play this and then attack. Wow, we're just at a stalemate here. And if I could get both of those online, that's that's a, you know, eight coming over, eight point swing with prismatic backup, but that's a few cards away from happening and Ona's Grace isn't making things easier. Yeah, I actually, it was between Ona's Grace. I had played it for like four games. And uh, what was I calling it? The uh, the Pilgrim. I don't know if he, either one could be right. There's not too much to do with extra mana here. So that's why I was leaning on Ona's Grace. I've always loved that card. Yikes. Well, that can block our uh, Outlander. No, it can't. <laughs> it says right on there it's unblockable. I can block the other knight. But we can also block him. Advantage us for right now. 16 to 16. He's got 19. We've got 33 cards left. Let's see how many of these have happened. Yikes. That sucks. Seal of removal. Nice tech. Wow, deck. Thank you so much. It's so awesome when these kind of things happen. I guess we'll... Uh, I mean, we do that and we make them... I don't want to live in fear... I'm just going to make him do it. Pop it. No? Going to let us gain for life? Okay. I think he thought he could bounce the enchantment and go for go for two there, but we'll drop here. At some point, we can't draw many more lands, can we? How many more do we have left? Three after this? All right. 
don't think we're coming out of this first one. We're one and one. Lost a close one to Tron, beat Stompy. And we're up against Azorius. Grab a pillow and a blanket and a glass of milk. Matchup. I mean, this is going to go long. We're already a minute down, so don't like our odds. We're definitely going to probably lose this first game, and then uh, time's not on our side. But we've seen one Oblivion Ring. Maybe that's all he's got access to because uh, CLP white and blue will really mean the difference here. Guardians are really legit. His air patrol is keeping him in the fight. For time's sake, I'm about to scoop if we draw another land. Mold Drifter showing up. You can deck him, says Cardbreaker. I don't know. That's quite a bit of power on board. Okay. Thank you. That's a reasonable hand. After all, we are only running four and four, right? Let's say bottom top. That'll help with the uh, decking part of it. We'll hold back. Don't think we're going to be doing enough damage to this dude. Yeah, that's a really well-designed card. It's like you invest all this stuff in it, and then it gets hexproof. That's nice. Very nice. I want to build with this now. I'm going to write that down. Skittering. It's just a neat, you know, you get to that, that point of mana, and you're just like, hey, check this out. We'll call white. Let's go. I hate that. I say yield for the turn. It's like. You want to click again and waste more time? It's like, no, that's why I did that. What do we have here? 12 cards left. He owns graces. 11 cards left. Custody Squire. I always like to vote for the same thing they vote for. All right, I'll vote for Oblivion Ring too. Keep your one card. All right. Down. Perfect, horrible timing, right? I've got the way to gain life back. Oh, all right, well, there's that. I'm almost glad that got countered. It's like, I want to put that on, gain some life, and it's just like, you know they've got Oblivion Ring in their hand. It's like, oh, there you go. Now, the Squire might be a good call in this deck, but again, I'm trying to keep this to where things can't be messed with. All right, down it comes. Okay. Nine cards left. Hmm. Well, then. Let's block here and I don't know here. Call white. I'll say no white. Take a bunch. Thanks, deck. Okay, off to game two. I got to use the restroom. Be right back. Let's look at the sideboard. Okay, begin sideboarding.
All right, plenty of time left. Eh, relics, okay. Let me see here. Let's try both of these. Wait, did I choose the right one? Blue, white. I'm going to take out two of these. Echoing truth might be fun, depending on when things go down. Leave no trace might be good, but it would also nix our own stuff, but we could always time it right. So I got echoing. Hmm. Relics. Looks like pacifism from crop rotation. Card breaker, bring in some knowledge. All right, we got one prismatic main. Um, just in case. I don't know. Not quite sure. I don't like this because there's not too much uh, that this really targets. More, I'm. I really wanted to show this off against black, but it just does seem to be a hindering card, not hindering light, so far. I guess I'm just gonna lean on another critter. We'll keep one strands in. Let's rock like this and see what happens. Debating whether I should bring in Leave No Trace. You know, maybe we don't get the, uh, they get an early journey everything draw and we can wipe it and then start over, but. Okay, well, our mana sucks. We're gonna mulligan this. Mana sucks again, but we can at least keep this. We'll keep, and uh, yikes. I really want access to those counter spells, man. I'm actually going to throw this back. Done. I wish we were way up ahead on time because then I could uh, I could lead off with um, Relic. Right now, I'm just going to get our land right immediately. Drop a line a little next turn, then Ash Barons. Thinking about Nimchimps. If we go to game three, maybe I'll bring that in. And the pond are showing up. Very cool, though. I'm just so glad this isn't Tron or, or some boring deck because I've got some options here. All right, I'm going to ponder here. Uh, we like that. We like all of this. Let's say top, top, top. No. I'm just going to play this for the uh, relic. Might as well trip it now, right? Turn off Custody Squire and you know, who uh, owns Grace. But it's going to eat up our clock something fierce. We're already a minute down, and Relic's a little bit of a double-edged sword. Seal's really good against us here. How cool is it? Well, two Azorius decks. Nobody's playing Acid Trip yet. Might be in the sideboard. Yeah, maybe that's a good call for black, right? All right, we've got another one coming. I'm going to sit on this and just wait. Got a very counter heavy hand here. I don't need white yet. I'll be alright. Okay. Now we can rock. Cycle this, drop a white. Man is right. Feeling light. Here we go. The black and green mutators have been spoiled. Oh, okay. Hey, yeah, that reminds me. Maybe uh, next game. These are all becoming such long games. Not many 2 O's. Like I said, when I, I got first in the uh, PC2 quite a while back with a build similar to this, and uh, do we chance it? I'm going to go for it. Nothing else going on. Got a counter spell. Let's see it now. I can at least remove it. Zoink. All right. There it goes. Boop. At least it's out of range with a seal of removal there. We'll go over... Try to go over the list next and then maybe play one more game and then we'll call it a day, I believe. But no, we're playing even right now. Don't let today's outing fool you. I think this deck has a lot of uh, staying power. We just haven't really seen any extremely favorable matchups, if you think about it. I really don't want to fall behind on tempo much more. I'm about to flip that relic. Rock back here. One of the things I like about this build is that there's almost no reliance on the graveyard so that I can 
trip relic ad nauseum and just, hey, I feel like it. Bam. One counter spell's been used up. Here comes a whole lot of cards. Still going to try to be patient. Okay. We'll get this out of here. He's got the seal right behind it, or at least representing some sort of aggro here. It's only turn 90. Two Azorius decks staring at each other, waiting to sue each other. I'll have to check out these new cards here. Yeah, now don't get me wrong. The new set does have some amazing art. I like how it comes out of the border a little bit. I think they overdo it a lot of it. But for right now, it seems all right. I haven't seen many flicker tricks. We're both playing the colors of it, but I think we both came to the same conclusion. Sometimes you wait around so long on those, it's not quite worth it, is it? Well, let's get rid of this. I think we're just going to slow roll this. Um, protection from red. Not too good against a seal of removal. The majority of the time you're running in a uh, right, especially the last week or two, burn and uh, boros decks everywhere. So I actually think this is a very good call. But of course, the day I bring it, nobody's playing those in the tournament practice room. That's how the cookie crumbles, my friends. Wow, we are really getting outclassed on mana here. This is really outrageous. I'm just going to do this to do it. Okay. Let's find some damn mana. Uh, let's say bottom on that, top on this. I'll cycle this for blue, obviously. Sit back on our other one. Play it. Boom. All the seals, you know, once they're out, unless you've got some sort of protection from spell, they're pretty impossible to remove. That's why I like Seal of Fire so much. But Audrey's dead. Very cool. If you're watching this later on YouTube or whatnot, very cool. Skittering. That card's been underplayed now that I'm reading it a little closer. We're waiting for some sort of bounce shenanigans, which we will try to counter. Let's say that we can. I don't like that card. With hexproof and all. Well, let's do that. Let's see if we meet with more counter magic. No? Okay. Cool. All right. Hey, I like seeing more of that. Let's get rid of that. I think they're probably just sitting on a bunch of journeys and stuff, don't you think? I know it seems crazy, but I can't really do much of anything until I get rid of you-know-who here. I'm wondering if it's worth doing that, using a ring on it. We don't really have a way to get back a ring. I'm going to try it. He's probably going to bounce it. I will be able to counter maybe another counter spell here. I'm not sure. Or he could uh, target his own dude here. Yes, that's also an option, right? If I did that, he has to trip that, and then he gets the dude back and he gains life. Um, what an interesting scenario here. Target this, he probably bounces it to his own hand, and we get rid of the culprit. But target this, he just sacrifices it and gets the thing back. Either way, he gets the thing back. I'll grab this. Yep. There it goes. But now our Steel of the Godhead can at least be turned on. We'll see if it even happens. Four to three as far as card count goes. All right. Litifite's still in the house. Hmm. See if we can get a uh, counter spell out here. Oh, right there. Okay, card breaker. Now you'll get all the land. <laughs> oh, damn you for cursing me. Really want to see a counter spell here. Good. So now we can play a bit more even here. Oh, let me drop the land just in case we've got. Could have countered that, but not too worried about it. 
Let's do this instead. Probably not long for the world with all the journeys and stuff floating around. But we'll be able to kind of reset our life total, go back to 2020, sit here. No promises here. I'd like our opponent's board a little bit more here. We both have just too many answers for the threats we've got. Making me really wonder if I should have a Sky Fisher or three in matchups like this where the ring gets wasted. You're like, no, can I get it back? Wow, look at all this stuff going through. All right, we're going to trip our yard. Once the mole drifter goes in there. Now we really want our COP white, right? COP white. Nope. Remember, we still have that. We get a COP white. We should be off uh, on easy street. Funny to give death touch to an 8-8. Eight, eight. It's like, well, a little redundant. Uh, I'm going to go for it. It's probably going to get bounced or journeyed. Let's go. At least we're hitting for two this way with the Math of Life link going on here. Thing we've got prismatic, we don't. Any journey or bounce spell, we're really hurting here. Okay. All right, here comes two. Why would you keep back Rift Watcher? We have prismatic strands for the counter war. Is that what we're? Talking about, okay. All right, now a double godhead feels like a good play. He can get rid of one, not two. And the oblivion ring isn't doing anything, so, okay. Still unblockable. There we go. But now we're playing even. If we get to a game three, I will bring in the uh, enchantment eight. That's it. Majority of the time it's going to nix our godhead, though, so I don't like that. Okay, we're losing one life a turn at this speed. What does our opponent have? There's the game. I don't know, one lady who flies. Yuck. All right, we're going to get eaten alive here. Give it a few more turns, and I'll be in Scoopsville. Not a deck I expected to see. Another deck this doesn't do too good against, I found out, was Walls. It's just we don't have much to do. Uh, Holy Light's actually surprisingly okay. It's not great. But it can, depending on the blocking tricks and stuff, you can really get, get some stuff through. Well, that's helpful much later, isn't it? If we just get some... Um, Circle of Protections, we can at least have some fun here because we've got Double Dispel back up. He's already played two counter spells of Memory Serves. One, two, Memory did serve correctly. I'll say okay to that. And knowing Audrey's daddy probably has two devious cover-ups in the sideboard for matchups like this that go a little bit long. Start refilling your hand. 28 to 9, that's not feeling very good. Okay. I'll bring this out at least for that. Um, I'm just going to do it now. I got any sort of bounce. So I definitely kept one white up there to at least imply prismatic and or if he bounced the knight. So that was a bit of a mini punt there. But who are we kidding? I'm pretty sure we've lost this game. So Ralph would be really good with Bones Player, but that's a 4-4 with lifelink. That's pretty nasty. Ugh. Maybe I need an Oles. Flying Nun has entered the chat. <laughs> is that what we're calling her now? Or is that literal the Flying Nun? Ugh. Take four. Let's see where this goes. 
Maybe I'll maybe I'll draw a last second COP white. What this has taught me though against these kind of matchups, I might want to go with the uh, owner's grace over what I did have in the pilgrim. Not sure. Both have their credit. I'm gonna go over the set review next, and we'll play one more after this. Hopefully, it resembles the meta game and something that has red in it. It's kind of the whole point of this deck. I think the last time I shared a similar deck, we had the same fate where it was a very red-heavy metagame, and I think we had one out of, like, five decks that had red. It's like, really? This happens a lot more often normally. All right. Well, uh, well no, if we get CLP white, we'll be all right. What's he... Will it show us what he points to without opening up the chat? No, it won't. We have to show the chat. Show game log. Seal of Cleansing. Okay, I'll vote for that too. Oh, no, a lot of fights been... Every once in a while he'll challenge me to something, and if I pick this one and he picks Burn, it's pretty much... Uh, I almost don't do it unless I'm testing it. It's it's that lopsided. I mean, it, just look at the cards, right? Come on, CLP White. See, CLP White, it's almost like he knows we're gonna we're looking for that, right? I'll say bottom, bottom. I could bounce that. He could respond. I could live another turn. That's that's how with it. Let's see what happens. Yeah, he's he, what if I run into that a few times? I'll pick random decks and I just get a hunch he's gonna play red and I'll I'll choose it and it's like aha. Get four jerk counters and put them on my face. <laughs> that's what it feels like anyway. I'll say white. Delaying the inevitable. We can't even out time him. We can't out deck him. We're just doing this to see if we draw into CLP White, which doesn't really matter because he's got Seal of Cleansing. But it'd be fun. It's a fun little exercise. Huzzah! Well, if we make him trip that, problem is we've got to use it on that, right? But I can maybe make him uh, jump. <laughs> Come on. At least maybe he'll he'll use the seal on that. If we do get a CLP white one, that'd be amazing. We gotta turn this thing around. Yeah, the Kestrel mm -hmm. makes something white. I've thought of many times. There's a there's a I think Keeper of Kukus, a red one that can give make something red or some some trick like that. I'll tap this, say white. We have lost, don't get me wrong. I mean We're just seeing what comes up here. So is there a uh, percentage on the new list of things that have been done? Like as far as the uh, number of cards to go? Is it completely spoiled yet? Is it 80%? Any number on that, guys? All right, we'll do this. We've seen a lot of cards. Circle of Protection White. We'll say top, top. Now, if I attack, I can't really do that because I'm going to have to block this dude. So this is what sucks, is now he can just do this <laughs> with that. See, I could attack, and then he pops that as a little, aha, gotcha, you don't gain life, but then it's like, well, then I can't block this, and we're at one life. <laughs> I'm glad we got to it. Oh, okay. Gladly. He must have another one. I wish I can't draw that next counter spell far, fast enough. There's no way we're going to get to game three mana here, but it's going to be fun trying. I'll choose that. Yeah, it's CLP whites are, I mean, just CLPs in general. They're clunky the way they work. Next level, CLP white. And we have nothing to do. Or one creature away. We have to counter just about anything he does. It's a losing man's game, but it's a fun one at that, I tell you. Woo! What you gonna do, sucker? Oh, yeah? I'll allow it. Mythicspoiler.com. Yeah, I've got... I think I still use um, MTG Salvation. Sometimes it's a little bit quicker. It'll be showing me stuff that's better. 
I got to counter creatures. I can't have no blues sneaking through. I've got to use my blocker for something. What's he got? What's he got? Oh, we got the answer. <laughs> we got to keep him off blue. Oh, that was fun. Oh, what a jerk. He's, he's going to keep attacking me and making me lose, use my mana. Got to love it. Pay one. Well, we're not going to have the time to even play a game three, but this is just fun. Take that, sucker. All right. We've got eight counter spells in hand. We're all good. Don't be too proud of this double-colored monstrosity you've constructed. The ability to attack for 2-4 lifelink is insignificant next to the power of protection. Whoosh. I know. He's getting our clock. We are not oblivious to this point. We're just seeing if... Uh, be pretty funny if we can time him out with one game here. I can't target that, can I? I can. I didn't think I could. Does it say, because uh, this is a white permanent, you'd think it would, wouldn't work on the, uh, on the dude. Choose source, not target. Oh, that's true. Good point. All I can hope is to deck them. We're definitely not going to have enough time for game three. Can't say I saw this deck coming, but how many times have my opponent said that about me? So I got to... Oh, no! That might win them the game in a multitude of ways. Ooh, we really need to get rid of that Mold Drifter fast. <laughs> Thanks, deck. All right. We're going to run right over here and see what we can see about this. So if I hit refresh, this is the one I've been using here. We've got some, uh, well, these are all pretty pretty recent. I don't have many uh, commons coming out there. So but we got some cool hippos, the cloud piercer and such. This just looks messy to me. I'm not quite sure. I love the moth motif. And I really like the uh, flavor text on this one. It's a, I, I love when they go off on a paragraph, and it's it's really well done there. This is bordering on tacky, but I don't. I there's part of me that doesn't mind it. I'm not quite sure the uh, the the double full art here. Just looks a little uh, Photoshop lazy on the edges here. I'm not liking these. Not much tech involved here as far as like things I would play and such. I'm just overall vibe of the set but god god i hate this card it says right there godzilla no but i'm going to try to focus a little bit more on the positive here moth is pretty broken in the draft what does the moth do again let's see uh where did it go whenever a creature you control without flying dies return to the battlefield and it's only control with a flying counter on it good lordy wow yeah that's a that's a good pull Let's see, we've got, this guy's not so bad because he looks more magical than like Godzilla-esque. But come on, this is like the most offensive wording, space Godzilla. I know we've got a little celestial theme going on with some of the lands lately, but but yeah, I agree with you guys. This Essence Scatter art is cool. I love this old world tapestry look. There's a red card with that too, but, and then it's like, come on, I just want to punch, if I've ever wanted to punch a baby in the face, it's this baby Godzilla card. My son's going to think it's cute, but ugh, just ruining the game aesthetically. And then this, it's like, hey, watch Netflix, anyone? Oops, there it is again. Terrible. Anyway, back to real magic. This looks pretty cool. I'm just saying like the art, not the card. I'm not really the <laughs> weirdest little review ever. I love the way this is set in the card. This I don't mind. I, I like the subtle going over the edge here. They're not, they're not screaming at you like, look at this. It's coming out of the artwork a little bit. I could take more of that. That's cool. But, um, oh, yeah, there's the, um, this I really like, this old artwork. I wonder if this is all the same artist. Just like that tapestry art. I love it. There's a, like the chicken zodiac or something. King Kong. Oh, my God. Don't, if there's King Kong in this set, I'm just going to go off. You've got to be kidding me. Space Godzilla. Death Corona. <laughs> Yeah, no kidding. So like this, I 
as a piece of art, I don't like it, but there's something, the aesthetics of it overall, I really like this. There's a red one that does that too. And I'm not too, too against the mysterious egg. What was funny, if you follow on Facebook, I had this, I saw this on the thing and I, I wrote something about it. I went back refreshed and it was gone. And I was like, oh, quite mysterious for the mysterious egg. This looks a lot like my dad, if anybody's curious. If he leaned on an edge with a cool cape on with some stuff. Um, oh, yeah, this is the one I really liked. I really like this artwork, I like cave drawing motif going on here. But it's funny, they almost never spoil um, commons till the very, very end. But this one, oh, the space, or this is the uh, mysterious egg that I was like, ooh, that is creepy. Almost looks like a, some sort of being with a mask on, like some sort of Japanese mask art. This is just... Uh, uh, this is like one of the most offensive pieces of art I've ever seen. Man, you can just hear the. I'm surprised they didn't make that. You play the card and you hear, go, go, Godzilla, the song just playing and some little microchip or something. Ah, drives me nuts. The card, the Godzilla names are not the legal names. How does that work? Yeah, Gingerbread Man is more um, because I I know what you mean there. I, I, I can hear your sarcasm or I can read it, but... That's more a Grimm's fairy tale, and that feels a lot more magic to me than strumming along with Go Go Godzilla. So uh, that's my defense of that. So there, um, lots of shark people. It's interesting. Not quite sure. Uh, and then these other things. So you know what? I'll take this art any day over the uh, Mecha Godzilla thing. So all right, all right. I'm gonna play one more here, guys. Actually, I'm gonna go get a refill real quick, and I will leave you for just a few, and be right back after this. of Brindelbergers will stay with you for life! Dripping slabs of succulent swine never sacrifice a flavor! <clears throat> Wait, what? Get Brindley! Congratulations to our popper winners! First place card contest goes to Radic from the Czech Republic, username Foo2. Our second days goes to Wilson Fisk. He is the winner of our Woo Rats rebuild. At first glance, this looked cute, but it proved to be very deluxe indeed. Plague Rusalka and the Brothers Murr go a long way to make this viable. Thank you to all that entered. Here are some other photo entries that almost made it in. And we're back. Let's keep this, just in case we're up against control. Man is a little slow. We'll be all right, though, I think. Okay. All right. Looks like uh, affinity at first glance. We'll see how accurate that is. This will go a long way. I'm just going to trip now. Go grab island. Depending on what we draw here, trip the barons or the preordain. Obvious play. Nice start. We're going to be at 16 really quick. So we have that. Let's go get an island. Yeah. We'll grab island. We'll preordain. Be careful they use the ring on stuff. All right, I'm liking this. We'll say, um, I'm going to say bottom on this and top on this. I like that. Guardian's going to be able to kill Carapace Forger all day long. Counterspell and Dispel for the Fling. Unless it shows up super soon. 
Might be okay here. Uh, protection from red is very good against, uh, art, I mean, uh, affinity. Galvanic Blast and company. It's good times. All right. If I do that to that, five cards. The problem here is um, uh, Mer Enforcer, the 4 4 artifact, because it kills our Guardian and it trades with these guys pretty easily. And you can need two of them at once. Uh, let's. I really want to. I'm just going to bring this out. Uh, I'm not going to be worried about a, you know, who showing up a Galvanic Blast because it can only target my face. Maybe they'll hit me. Who knows? I'm going to just bring that out to trip and draw. Because I'm going to let this hit me one more time. I'll probably drop Guardian and slow roll this. This will be a close one. If we get our enchantment on board, we're all good. At least game one. One of the big problem cards that um, I was tickled to see, cost me a game, but was the um, Ray of Revelation. That can be really nasty in the sideboard games two and three. But a lot of decks lean on like, uh, Clark can shaman and stuff and just does nothing against us. All right, next turn's going to be a doozy. I'll take the four here. I really, he's really set up the turn, got his mana all right. There's going to be a lot of stuff happening next turn, which is why I would really like to sit back and counter something. Fortunately, we can't really do that. So I'm going to play this and hope for the best. At least we can block that dude all day long. Get him for two here. We'll do this. And maybe next turn we'll start doing some stuff. I thought it would be going to come. Oh, Kamigawa soon. Yeah, that was another block I didn't quite like too much. Okay. There's a good target for Oblivion Ring. That Seeker can get pretty nasty. I've been seeing a very huge uptick in those people running like four of them at the uh, compass so this deck this build does a lot better against us than the, just your typical affinity one does good news is we've got a white creature got plenty of time with regards to those things going on i think we just sit back i'm gonna trip this now okay and i'll just attack here i've got prismatic for days here i I just really need to draw into uh, our enchantment. It's so obvious what we're holding. It's ridiculous. Get splash damage from sideboards up to build deal with boggles. Built to deal with boggles. Not quite sure on what that's referenced to, but. That was the one with uh, the Chate, right? Well, we'll rock like this and call blue. Take four and sit on a strands. <laughs> one card in hand. At least they don't have the Atog this time. All right. I've got another one of those. We've got that. I'm thinking I'm going to pull a Plivian Ring on the Forger here. There's a block there. And I'll attack here. Weird game. So I'll block the Atog, trip it to call blue, and I actually hope they have fling here because the dispel is going to be really funny when prismatics on the stack. They always seem to draw it at pristine times, and most part thanks to cards like that. Not a fan of wishing well. Not a bad card. I just think there's better options. Interesting. We'll block here. Okay. 
out of the blue. They've got three cards. Let's do this now. Call blue. Let's see if they've got any tricks. Oh, I guess they don't have fling. Or battle rage. Ooh, that might beat us. Pretty hard to beat a Mer Enforcer with this build. That's the one card I usually like to sit back on counters for. I often have to double block. All right, we're just going to have to play this out. Yeah, ninjas definitely. One, two, three, one, two. We've got a counter. Block, block. We take four. Swing back. Not much I can do here. Board is getting clogged. These five sixes are nothing to joke at. Only hope they get really greedy and overdo the atog math here. Well, at least we can eat up some artifacts. Nice and slow like. Say blue. Probably got a galvanic blast by now. So we take four. Okay. And I have finally started taking. Oh boy. We've really got to counter that. <laughs> Glad they're hellbent. I was like, don't have an extra fling after that, even though we've got strands in the yard. Can we do anything here? We're going to have to uh, block, 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 block. We can double block that. So apply that we've got counterspell. In this case, we do. Oh, we can't do anything here, can we? We've got a block there and there. So we can call blue on that. Yeah. And it's going to cost us a creature, though. Boy, where is our enchantment at? Hmm. There goes my owner's grace logic from last game. I really need to draw that now. <laughs> Dreamer single. You got to be careful with the real world stuff. If it's real world old, like 200 plus years ago, like I wouldn't want him to come out with some Billy the Kid Wild the West set. That would really suck. All right. Let's uh, stop that from happening. Actually, yeah, we'll stop that from going down. Nazis and magic. <laughs> they are pretty damn evil. But yeah, that would be a little too, maybe in two or three hundred years, they could have something that looks like that. But I'm sure everybody would get butt hurt about it if they came in now, right? All right, um, those are coming through. We got a block smart. We'll rock like this. And then we'll call red. Zoop. Call in red. Then we're dead. Invoke prejudice. <laughs> All right. Second bad, let's go to game two. Liking this uh, Navigator Compass keeps keeps them in it. Bring this in. Take out relics. Gonna bring in CLP blue, actually. Just one. I don't think I need to go green or anything like that. Um, that's about it. We just needed to draw this. This would be interesting against Fling, Galvanic Blast. Yeah, we could probably bring this in finally. It would be nice to bring it in for us at least one go here. But what to take out? These are nice. And notice we didn't see a single... Well, I guess we did see one. Just had to block with it because we never drew our dude. The dude. 
got enough stuff going on there. Let me get rid of a. Uh, I'll get rid of the CLP. Let's just place pure here. Oh, is there a rumor about it being like a virus theme before all this stuff went down? <laughs> Not sure. All right. Counter magic, maybe mana fixing. I'll keep this. I've seen better. I've seen worse. If we lose this one, this will be it, folks. Make sure to cover up when you go outdoors. A little nefarious government ploys I've been hearing about. Don't know how nefarious they were, but looking back on time, it's like, it makes sense, right? Everything's kind of airborne. It's like, well, it doesn't help. Well, it helps a little bit. Would you, if somebody died, would you wonder if a little bit would have been enough? I would. So get that bandana on. Go order that ninja mask. I'll say bottom on this, bottom on this. Let's find some white, please. He had legendary otters. Yeah, that didn't bug me that much. Nature, you know, boars, bears, things like that. Makes sense. I think you got to go like medieval and back. Like I never mind when uh, the dark came out and they had, I think they had, wasn't it Hypnotic Spectre had some like Edgar Allan Poe flavor text and stuff. I didn't mind that. It's like, okay, that's enough time's passed. Boy, if we don't get white here, I'm going to have to scrap this, make some egregious notes. Problem is, I'll have 10 games in a row where this thing plays like a dream. All right, I'm going to save this for uh, Mer Enforcer if it happens. I guess they've just gotten rid of Frogmite, huh? That's not how things are headed to now. Cycle this. We've got to resemble some sort of aggro here. Come on. We'll bring this out. They could always uh, Red Elemental blast this, so you got to play your in games two and three. You've got to kind of trip these at the right time. This is true, Dreamer Stingo, Phil the Griff. That, that was very goofy. Yeah, I wonder if the person at fault for that is related to or knows the same person, or is the same person of the new set. Yeah, I keep, I'm serious. My, my outside of magic friends that know I like magic brought that up. They're just like, is this a joke? And it was just the Godzilla card. And that was the first time I'd seen it and I was like it's got to be an April Fool's joke little did I know or little what I find out Two, four, three. I have I've seen games like this where I, I lose to a, a Tamir battle rage I cannot live in via I'm gonna get out our uh, I'm gonna get out our boys here we'll rock like this that's protected too. Oh, hippos are nasty. I think one of the drug, wasn't it? Um, that was that drug kingpin and um, uh, Narcos is based on uh, Escobar. He brought in so many uh, wild animals and hippos that outside of Africa, I think that's the second largest population on the planet. But yeah, those things are. I talked to a river guide. I grew up near a lot of rivers in the uh, Sacramento. Lake Tahoe Basin area, there's a lot of white water rafters and stuff, and they all had talks about worldwide visits to, you know, such a such ex exotic place, and that was always on their top horrifying, like, terrible creature list was the hippo. Bet that would be intense. Hmm. I want to go get our win condition here. Uh, yeah. Let's go find it. Zoop. And attack with this. Sure. We could lose here. You know, they could have that perfect combination rage and stuff, but I want to get our life online. Hopefully draw into like another island and we can sit back on counterspell and start reaping the rewards of the uh, the life night. Let's call it that. Yeah, it's uh, that narco stuff's pretty good. It's got to be good TV when you have to read the whole thing. One of the best. Uh, if you follow me on Facebook, I put out a a, a Corona movie guide, just stuff that I totally 100% back. Like I will, I'll argue. One of them is it was originally called La Casa de Papel, and 
same sort of thing. You've got to read the entire show, but it's so good. I'm going to keep my life total nice and high. But it's a bank robbery heist movie in a different language, and you have to read the entire thing. It's pretty crazy. I'm just going to play this. We're going to get our life on board. Careful, don't misclick there. We'll rock like this. And normally galvanic in response and we're out two cards, but can't happen in this scenario. We've got counterspell backup for some shenanigans. Let's see what happens. We'll rock like that. Usually want the backup. That's why we run the three, uh, what do you call uh, dispels main? So we're only really going to be we're not really gaining any life. We're just hurting them because we're going to want to block that atog at all costs. But if we can survive till next turn, we can throw start throwing prismatic in the yard, and then we're trading even with more enforcer at a pretty healthy life total. We'll see. Really want to draw another plane so that I can uh, drop that outlander and just have good times against a tog and company. But even here, a Timur battle rage. There's a lot of stuff that can go wrong. Uh, does he have it? Or he's looking for it? All right, check one off. Unless they've got the fling. Yes, I've seen old boy. It that betrayed, good to hear from you. Thank you for chiming in. Oh, that's the other part we don't like after the fact. Well, then we know that they drew that. Hmm. This is interesting. We've got red on blue. In case they have some sort of echoing trick, I'm going to bring out this. I'll attack with this. We're really considering double blocking that Mer Enforcer. But we won't. The best martial arts flick I can recommend, because you've got to really, not to just, you know, fans of it, but just to a person. It's got to be Ipmon, which is what I said. Because, I mean, you can watch that with a, a wife or a date or somebody that doesn't even like Kung Fu, and they'll, they'll like that movie. So I put a lot of thought into my list. That's Oh, boy, that is not what we wanted to see there. Mer Enforcer. I've, I have such a problem with that card when they get the Mer Enforcer heavy draws that I've really considered that one where, you know, you, gain you can gain seven life by eating it. Is he going to go all out here? He's got us if he does. We're going to get flung with two prismatic in our hand. Oh, that's going to... It's like they, they know what's in our hand. So many dispels and counter magic. What you going to do? Has he got it? He's got it. Look at that. See? Just like it can lose to burn, it can lose to fling with two prismatics in our hand. We've got no outs. He's got us there. We'll show him, although it does feel like they knew what was in our hand. But that'd be pretty pathetic, right? <laughs> anyway, guys, hey, I want you to all stay safe out there. I'll have the deck list here in the description below. I know outside of beaten Stompy, we lost to a Rogue Bruin um, Azorius, and then I had a close loss to Tron, and then that affinity matchup. So, bleh, whatever. I still like it. I'm going to be tweaking as time goes on and stuff. But thank you for joining me. As always, we're going to... Uh, Roll to our little shenanigans with some new members and board. Thank you for all you coffee supporters out there. The newest ones, uh, Jarvis808 and Appleberg, or Appelberg. Thank you for that. Yes, the quarantine. I've been tempted because I've got free time like everybody else to, to do multiple shows. Um, and I, I'm not saying I won't do that. It's just in the past when I've done that, I get really kind of burned out. It's it's a, There's a lot, lot going on behind the scenes and stuff like that. So and plus, you know, keep it consistent, just kind of like a, the sunrise. That's how propaganda should be, right? Uh, streamers come and go, but we'll hopefully always be here. So anyway, thank you for joining us, everybody. We'll see you online all week, all weekend. Feel free to hit me up for a game or six, and we'll talk to you next time on Propaganda. Adios, everybody. Hey, Propaganda fans. Thank you so much for the continued support of the people to my right. Also, if you want to have your deck played, a 10-ticket donation on Magic the Gathering online is probably the best way to do it, as well as sending us an email to propaganda at gmail.com. But anyway, thank you so much again for the people over here, and we'll see you next time.